hit that like, everybody. Let us know you're there. All right. All right. There we are. Hi, everybody. Yes, I am slightly sunburned. Welcome to the show. Good to see you. Happy uh, Thursday. Thursdays uh, always start a little bit late because I have family FaceTime. It went very well. I'm, thank you for asking. Um, my dad just got uh, uh, cochlear implants because he uh, had a hunting injury a few years ago. Uh, he didn't go like hunting with Dick Cheney or anything like that. But he, uh, long story short, he, he was walking through the snow, fell in the snow and put his hand out and the snow didn't stop him because it was soft powder. And when he went in, a stick went in his ear and punctured his eardrum. And he had vertigo for a while, which was really annoying. And then he obviously lost some hearing in his right ear. So he's dealt with that for a while and had those orders. So he had cochlear implants. So I'm just telling you that he just got them. And um, let me tell you, family FaceTime is extra primo fun when... Uh, <laughs> Mm -hmm. That's what it sounds like to my dad <laughs> if he doesn't turn his head this way. Basically, he's like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and no, that's not a special effect. I'm just magic. But anyways, it's it's gotten way better and it took him a few days. It's starting to like form on his own and then you basically learn how to do it. Hi, everybody in the chat rooms. By the way, can I just show you guys something, a, a little treat? I I was uh, Let's let's see if I get because this is gonna be very hard to even try to break this out. Jesus, um, let me see. Cause there's hi everybody, how you doing? What's going on? Uh, hellos. 
to everybody. I just want to find somebody in there. Um, let me know uh, you're there. Help, well, here, we'll do it this way. Um, no, that's a kid one. Cheney. Sounds like a droll name. Yes, it's true. I'm looking at the chat real quick because I want to show you something. Hey, Hal. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Um, Josh. Sorry about that. Much love. Thank you for joining me. I hope I am able to cheer you up in my silly little way and give you an ounce of distraction or some information and, and, and make you feel compelled in, in the center of this and not in spite of it. Because we all handle what we handle, how we handle it. And my goal and gift here on this earth is to give out laughs, regardless of the circumstance. So you can always drop by and get them. And if they're too much or not right, if it's inappropriate to the circumstance you're in, you can take it on the heel and toe and come back later. You know what I mean? I think that's I think that's the gift we all look for. Um, and let's see. I'm going to scroll this thing down because I won't be able to. This is enormous. I'm on. Uh, we're on. Instagram, hold on, wow, this is a lot, hold on, I'm going to pause it for one second, good lord, um, Robert, uh, thank you very much, he goes, you have that thing, your cheerfulness is infectious, and you're like, oh my god, how, congratulations, Robert, by the way, you're the first uh, visible chat thing overlay in my chat that I was able to do with my setup that I've been tinkering with and trying to get to work, so congratulations, Robert, uh, just, there you go. Uh, Georgina, you're not late. You're just in time to be a little bit early for stuff that didn't happen later. Where, oh, the play button. There it is. Um, yes, be honored. It's very good. Um, and I'm going to take this guy out. See if I can do this. Yeah, I can do this. And I'll just break it out and put it there where it's easier for me to get to. That's a great idea. I'm a genius. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a lot. It's a... Yes, it is a momentous occasion. It absolutely is. I have to say though, um, it is a it is a composite of all the chats. So god damn it's blazing. It's going very fast. Um Yeah. Oh thanks, Liberal Dan. Look at that. I uh, yeah. <laughs> you too, Thank you so much. I didn't realize I even said that. It just says it because uh, I built this thing so I don't miss anybody. So thank you. Because sometimes the show blazes by and I feel like shit because I can't tell everybody. Congrats on being infectious. I, you know, I feel like uh, I feel like a character in uh, um, in that uh, move in the book Hot Zone from the '90s that had everybody panicked for about six weeks, if you'll recall. All right. Um, there we go. And let's see. Let me grab some, the, honestly, the chat. I'm gonna have to work on this. I'm gonna have to like slow the chat to a medium crawl, or I'm not gonna be able to uh, make. Whoops, sorry. Carl says make the overlay a tad bigger. It's a little hard to see. Excellent. Well, I will do precisely that. Let me try this right now. How about that? And then I'll. Yeah. There you go. And I hold on. I have to have my name up because otherwise you guys don't know who the heck I am. Who's this guy? Who's this fella? Thanks, uh, Carl, for the note. I appreciate it. Um, there you go. Um, Jackie saying hi to... Whoops, sorry. Whoops, uh, no. Jackie saying hi to Liberal Dan. There you go. It's good. A guy goofball. There you go. Uh, so I'm working on it. Um, oh, MM at Walsh passed. Yeah. Um, thank you, um, Darkstar, for mentioning this because MM at Walsh, first of all, is in two of my most watched movies and... And my favorite movies, clearly. Fletch and Blade Runner. Blade Runner being my favorite movie. Fletch being the movie I've seen the most times. And uh, just fantastic at his work. Just blends into everything. Everything was real. Even as the assassin psychopath, the, the weird shooter in The Jerk. If you'll recall, the whole, he hates these cans. The, the shooter was M. Emmett Walsh. It's a, it's like a, a strange little, you know, bit that he he did. He was fantastic. He was so great. And of course, um, uh, he he's he holds a special place in our heart because drop your shorts and bend over, Mr. Babar. He is indeed, and shall always be, Doctor Jellyfinger and um, Arnold Babar. Isn't there a children's book about the? An elephant named Babar? I don't know. I don't have any. No children? No elephant books. 
Um, by the way, yes, Parnas was great. Uh, Lev, I can't wait for you to come on the show so I can uh, um, show you how much I appreciate how annoyed uh, you made uh, Tony Bobolinsky. Dr. Rosen Rosen. Dr. Rosen Penis. Um, <laughs> that's right. There you go. Um, um, Babar. Um, I feel like, uh, was that one B or two? One. B-A-B-A-R. That's two. Yeah, but right, not right next to each other. I thought that's what you meant. Um, so, uh, fantastic. Yes, Lev was indeed brilliant. Um, and did a great job. And there you go. And it's terrific. Okay, now, uh, and hello. Hi, to Sparklers. Thanks, Francie. Hello. Um, if I'm not mistaken, and I'm not seeing old news, we lost a sparkler uh, yesterday, last night. Um, uh, yes, we have, and it. I, I, I don't want to kind of jump the gun on it if they don't want it announced or whatever. Yes, Donna, um, her son, who has autism, um, announced that she passed yesterday, and... Um, Lovely lady, was a great part of the chat, was always a joy to see her talking amongst you guys, and uh, so she will be sorely missed. Uh, she's one of the many that I was hoping to get to meet on the Sexy Liberal Tour, um, so don't pass up a chance to come give me a hug, you guys. Even if you can't come to the show, a lot of these shows, I'm either having a Nerd Halen show the night after, like Denver, spread the word. Um... And um, and others, but it's mainly so I can <laughs> so I can see you guys. Yeah, so we love you, Donna, and and to her family for letting her spend time with us. We greatly appreciate it. So, um, yeah, that was that um, that was a sad piece of news this morning. Um, I'll see you at Durham, Aaron. Absolutely. And now I get back to my job uh, and my I wouldn't call it so much a job. That's not quite fair. It's a calling. It's a dream. It's a, it's, it's my idea of a good time, um, is me making people laugh and, uh, and, and being a bit silly. My, you know, uh, on a side note, again, is, you know how I have Midwestern goodbyes? This is a Midwestern hello. Get used to the idea. So my dad and, uh, my son and I were on, uh, FaceTime part, part of the call today. And, um, my, my, I said something and I made a joke. And my dad was saying, uh, he's just being, to, he said to my son, he's like, oh, he's just being silly. And I was like, I beg your pardon. I am silly. I'm not being silly. This is not temporary silliness. I am, <laughs> I am in, I insist on being silly all the time. By God. This is not, uh, yeah. I don't, I don't, I'm not, I don't act silly. I am silly. And I'm proud of it. God damn it. All right. And then, where's this guy? I'm going to open this window up. Where are you? Yeah, there you go. Open up, you silly thing. Okay. Uh, so, I okay, let's get started. Uh, I appreciate you guys. Thank you. I will try and see if I can. Do I have the, um, in the comms, I'm going to have to have some. I'm going to put the chat thing in there on the next one. But for the, this is going to be kind of an ask me anything. Hey, Treva. Um, oh, I just, I just gonna go leave my device in another room. Uh, I looked for getting into Denver, but I'll keep looking. Uh, yeah, the night after the Denver gig, uh, we are at HQ in Denver. Uh, Nerd Halen is. Yes, I am a silly, silly man. Uh, thank you so much. Robert, look at that. Member for 19 months. Jalapeno. Hey, sparklers. See, it's a community. We love you guys. It's wonderful. There I said it, and I feel better for having said it. Um, okay, here we go. This is, uh, uh, let me just start off, and Robert, you can probably back me up on this because you've seen this. It is very difficult to find someone to out-stupid Bongholio. Occasionally, I got to say, Glenn Beck really makes uh, a go of it. He makes, he, he gives him a run for his dummy, if you know what I mean. Um, but I have to say, there's a new kid in town. Um, there's a new shithead in town, and this town ain't dumb enough for the two of us. And it's this little fella right here. This is uh, 
uh, Jesse Waters, also known as uh, Stretch Ben Shapiro. And I don't know how he did it, but he somehow, I guess, bullshitted his way to the front of the line at Fox. And for some reason, somebody there thinks he knows what he's talking about. <laughs> I could all, or, or he's perfect at bullshitting idiots, which is really the business model. So maybe I'm off on this, but I, I really do have to say like, like he was just a classless racist prick who did like stunts on, for Fox and friends and stuff early on, which were like the equivalent of like a morning show where it's like John and Sarah, the Skeeter in the morning. And the Skeeter is this guy who has got, you know, uh, I don't know, had water on the brain or is a little slow or odd or something like that. And they send him out to like, okay, are you out there in the middle of the parking lot? Okay. Now take off your pants. Like that kind of shit. Right. Okay. It, that kind of stuff that morning zoos do but racist and shitty. Meh? Okay, so that was his thing. That was his shtick, right? That's his... And then he get. I I guess it's because they had to broom Tucker because they could have broomed uh, uh, Maria Bartiromo, but they have her on the cheap. They don't gain anything. Like, Tucker was expensive. So you could make some of your money back just by getting rid of him and plugging this fuckhead in, right? But Maria Bartiromo... They can't pay her very much for that show. I mean, honestly. A, she's on more, on Fox Business, which is like a sub, it's like a, you know, the, the third cousin playing the banjo on the on the porch in Deliverance um, of the networks of, you know, Fox at the top and then whatever. But Fox Nation's probably the butt knuckle of that whole thing. But, the, but Fox Business, they're not, you know, nobody there is getting rich from their paycheck, is my guess. Especially Maria. Or they would have kicked her to the curb, right? Okay, so this is uh, his reaction to Bobolinsky. And obviously, there's going to be a bunch of these things that are... Jesse Waters, Joe Biden was for sale. Well, apparently, now that he's president, he isn't anymore. And that's good news, because past tense being not prologue, I think it's very important. Um, That said, this uh, idiot... Um, is, uh, yeah, I don't even know. Well, you'll see. Like, his takes on this stuff have been garbage. And, well, I'll just show you. Uh, the circus came to D.C. today. Democrats waltzed into work wearing costumes. Well, no. Uh, one of them, Moskowitz, uh, wore a, ma- a Putin mask to fuck with them. I just came to thank James Comer for taking all of our intelligence and using it in the committee. Maybe he can come see the technology in our grocery stores. Thank you. (laughs) He dunks on Tucker on Jesse's show. Do you think Jesse noticed? Congressman, don't you think this behavior is kind of immature? You're kidding, right? I think this behavior is kind of immature. Democrats slapping on... I think it's uh, satire, I think, technically. On Putin masks. There must be a Hunter Biden hearing. Yeah, there was. Except Hunter didn't show. Well, yeah, but it it was a, a hearing about Hunter Biden... And it was provably driven by Russian intelligence. After pretending he wanted to testify under the bright lights, Hunter got stage fright. No, he just wanted to testify by himself and have the whole time not just be pinned between like four people or, and have this fucking wrestling match between him and Bobolinsky where they can, because he never needs to see that guy again. If they give him his own hearing, I'm guessing he'll show up. But his former business partners didn't. Should I allow Hunter? partner, right? Oh, no, the other guy was... Well, I don't know. Was Galvanis actually his partner? Debatable. Honor to give his opening statement first. Well, uh, doesn't appear Mr. Biden showed up for his public hearing, so we'll recognize you, Mr. Bobolinsky. Tony Bobolinsky has been waiting for this moment for four years. <laughs> yes, yes. It's been his dream to get revenge on the Bidens for making him look like the... St- the skeevy con artist dickhead he is to all the people he's been trying to shellac forever. Yeah. Some people's wait a lifetime for a moment like this. He came out swinging in his opening statement, leaving the Democrats rattled. I think annoyed, actually. Rep Dan Goldman and Jamie Raskin, both lawyers 
and Mr. Goldman, a former prosecutor with the SDNY from New York, will continue to lie today in this hearing and then go straight to the media to tell more lies. Uh, also, uh, I'm uh, calling someone a liar, never mind the fact that it is just, a, you know, it's an ad hominem attack, whatever. But it doesn't actually prove that they lied. You, you have very little time. And again, we looked at his statement. So he's, even the shit he cites is just fucking weak sauce. But just calling them a liar and saying they're going to lie to the media about something that's on television is just fucking weird. It's just kind of lame. Uh, you know, why wouldn't you come out, honestly, anybody in the chat room, wouldn't you come out and say if you had a situation like this and you're like, they're going to lie about Like if the Republicans, if I was called to testify and the Republicans had said some shit about me that was a lie, I would cite it word for word. And included with my statement is the materials that I'm referencing that I would like put into the record alongside my statement if if you can do that so that you can see it, so I don't have to quote it all and waste my time. Right? That's what I would do. I wouldn't just call them liars. I would go, um, you know, rep son of a dung what has said this about me and this is what I actually said and I would like to put into the record what I actually said and what he said I said at, right next to each other. So, so for posterity knows who said what for real. Just like that. Um, so, oops, hold on a second. Let's see if I just scroll over here. Um, oh, Leslie, I'm just glad you're here. Hunter Biden's defense attorney, Abby Lowell, weaponizes letters to Congress to try to smear yeah, my name. Mr. And Chairman, speak for saying a weaponized letter. What did you do? Give you a paper cut? What happened? Make you lick the stamp? Yeah, I apologize for the disruption. Am I supposed to say it's my time, Mr. Raskin? Yeah. <laughs> An eyewitness. He's so great. I'm reclaiming my time. Am I supposed to say I'm reclaiming my time, Mr. Raskin? They um, worked that out ahead of time, just so you know, him and Comer. With impeccable credentials, former. Impeccable credentials. Based on what? He's the one who was seeking out the CEFC deal, you dumb motherfucker. If CEFC is the problem, he's the he's typhoid Mary. Naval officer, highly educated, multiple security clearances, legitimate business. Used to have it. So did Scott Ritter, and he's a convicted pedophile. Man, Tony Bobulinski, the original whistleblower. Well, yeah, except the problem was he didn't actually end up having a whistle. He was basically just holding his fingers and going. <laughs> if he was the original whistleblower and his shit has been around the longest and it was worth a goddamn, they'd already have filed charges, dumb dumb. Was under oath for the first time in public. In public. And he called the Biden family liars. Yeah, that's that's a matter of opinion. You can you can call someone a liar if you don't cite a specific lie. This might be shocking to people, but if I was under oath and I called somebody a liar, period, and they, you know, you you could grill me. You could certainly if it was if it wasn't just direct testimony and I was able to be cross examined, they could go, "What lies were you talking about?" Which is part of how they go. But calling somebody a liar, you can call them names all you want under oath. It's your opinion. The American people must hear it. You're presented here today with two narratives in this investigation. A false one being pushed by Joe Biden, a serial liar and fabulous, now under this impeachment investigation for public corruption. It is clear. What corruption would that be? It's clear to me that Joe Biden. Can I, can I just say also, this is all about China. And no one has been harder on China than Joe Biden. No one. Not a, no president since fucking Nixon, since before Nixon, because Nixon was the guy who opened it up. No president since before Nixon has been this hard on China, period. Not since fucking Mao. And the fabulous idea is that they, he tells grandiose stories is the idea. Was the brand being sold by the fam Biden family? Again, a brand is not access. Hey, does anybody here know the difference between, uh, like, let's say you're thirsty and you have a can of Coke or you just have a sticker with Coke written on it, with Coca-Cola written on it. Is there a difference? You need something to drink, something material in the world. Is there a difference between the, the soda and the brand, the thing itself and the brand? Now, 
can anybody sell the brand? Can anybody take a Coke sticker and just stick it on whatever the fuck they want? Yeah. Can can anybody uh, sell Coca-Cola technically? No. Joe Biden was more than a participant. I hope that analogy works for people. Participant in and a beneficiary of his family's business. He was an active, aware enabler who met with business associates. An active, aware enabler. Right. Such as myself to further the business. I ask this big question. If there's no evidence of corruption here today, if Joe's conduct and the conduct of his family we were fully legal yesterday. and proper, then why are they so dishonest about it? That's a matter of opinion, and you're wrong. They aren't. Why are you dis... If you have all this evidence, why do you have to call them liars? That would be my point. Why do you even have to say liars? In your opening statement, seriously. Th there is nothing about... Uh, I guess most people think of a, the opening statement in a situation like this as a preamble, right? But it doesn't have to be. I, I gotta be honest. If I had a situation like this, I would come in and go... Maybe th I could tell you who the fuck I was and why the fuck I was there in 45 seconds. And the rest of it would be um, measurably there is this bill that needs to be passed, this this idea, this idea that I have, this circumstance happened, these, this matter of facts. And I will gladly discuss at length any of these facts. Like in a, instead of doing a fucking like, pre like a preface to a book, either do the uh, just do the a fucking appendix. Just throw it on the table. Not just slight misrepresentations of fact, but deep untruths about like the entire corrupt enterprise. But I love this for sale, the big guy, which is their term, man. Belensky met with Joe Biden twice, confirmed he was the big guy who called the. No, he didn't. Confirmed that Gilear referred to him as the big guy. That's not confirming he's the big guy. And no, and nobody else was like, everybody else was like, we don't call him the fuck off the big guy. Also, uh, is the big if the big guy called the shots, uh, why does anybody get to get any of the money? And why does he, why, if he's in charge and he's the, the whole thing hangs on him, why does he get the smallest slice, you weirdos? The shots. Joe Biden was for sale. The family. <laughs> to whom? Because I got to tell you, if he was for sale to who was in charge of Ukraine pre-2014 and into 2015, that was the Russians, and he's been curb stomping them. And if it was the Chinese, he's been skull fucking their economy for two goddamn years. Family desperately needed cash. Hunter. Wait, who? Who? And was for sale. The family desperately needed cash. No, they didn't. First of all, they were never rich to start with. I mean, James and Hunter, I guess, did better. But Joe was never rich. And he had, after he sold his book, he was like, Jesus, I've never had this money before. That's why he hired Eric Schwerin. He needed a, he needed a money manager for the first time. Hunter shook them down with his dad in the room. Got you, by the way, you can't shake down people that are blackmailing you. It doesn't work that the way. The cash and then cut Tony out. Well, yeah, that 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 uh, might be the reason why he's there. They took the cash and cut him out because he was promising access to Hunter's dad, and Hunter was like, "That's not how it works. Fuck you. I'm, shut up, or I'm not working with you." And then he kept doing it. Hunter Biden represents. He's a governance expert. That's why Burisma put him on the board. Well, he obviously can't do basic math. The board of Oneida Holdings had seven votes. Each one of them, Hunter, Jim Biden, James Gillian, Rob Walker, had a single vote. I had three votes. Right, which is fucking weird. That's why they dissolved the company. There's like, why the fuck are we... He doesn't bring anything to the table. Why does he have nearly a 50% stake? If one of us gets sick, this asshole makes all the decisions. I have a master's degree in electrical and nuclear engineering. I think... Which, uh, I think... It proves that I know a thing or two about the music business. I think I can do math. I yeah, one guy got three votes, Easy Network. Yeah. I had three. They had four. They right, but individually. And the idea was that, that Gilear uh, was your guy. 
and that he would always side with you. So th- it, it was it it was just a shitty business decision. First of all, I don't even know that that's how it ended up working out. They dissolved it before it even did anything. They controlled Oneida Holdings. So Hunter Biden's representations that I was trying to take. First of all, uh, that I was trying to take over it with my three votes to his one. Take the business from them or I didn't know is all a sham and a misrepresentation. He wanted money in his account instantly. And that's why he shook down the Chinese and they were willing to send him that five million dollars because they viewed it as a bribe to the Biden family. It wasn't just for what Joe Biden wasn't in office. And the idea that he was a shoe in for the presidency is just fucking weird. I knew he was going to make it, but I was practically alone in talking about how he was going to be president in 2019. Jesus Christ. China, the Biden family was tangled up with the Russians. Corrupt and compromised. Oh, you mean uh, because Rob Walk or um, Devin Archer had a relationship with Maria Bartiromo, or uh, Maria Bartiromo, listen to me, uh, uh, Elena Batorina. We know about the Russian billionaire who had dinner with Joe and Hunter, wired him millions, and then left Biden off the sanctions list. But. Well, I, uh, this is new to me. Biden was going to be on, the, Russia was sanctioning America, and Biden was going to be on the sanctions list. They paid Joe Biden to leave him off the sanctions list. Well, of course, why would you sanction someone if you've just given them a bunch of money and then they can't spend it? And then. How are they going to show their appreciation? Yeah, this is stupid. It was much bigger than that. Well, it'd have to be because uh, it's this is it's uh, non-existent. Anything's bigger than zero, dumb fuck. The Biden family was brokering Russia-Chinese energy deals right under the FBI's noses. No, they weren't. CEFC was seeking a, a piece of Rosneft. Not, uh, not Oneida Holdings, not this deal. What the fuck are you talking about? Oh, let's, let's see what he, if we, is he going to play a clip? Chairman. Yeah. Okay. Let's see if he actually, what he just said is in this clip is actually in the clip. He was dropping $50 million of cash for penthouses in Manhattan. Who- Wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Chinese energy deals right under the FBI's noses. Chairman Yee was dropping $50 million of cash for penthouses in Manhattan. Who you- yes! Most of which went to Donald Trump. What the fuck are you talking about? Hey, asshole. Ye- the Bidens don't own property in New York City. You know who does? Donald fucking Trump. Well, did. Or maybe might not. But <laughs> Donald Trump, that's who. Holy shit. Thanks, Edward. Appreciate that. Um, yeah, for fuck's sake. Um, did it pop in? No, okay, I'll, I'll add it. Um, I want to be able to show everybody the thing. Oh, the, it, uh, how many times do I? Fuck, Yi Jin Ming owned. I mean, and by the way, he owns one that I know of. Right. Um, Chen. Hi. Uh, there we go. Yeah, that's what I want. Boink. There we go. Um. Yeah. Um, uh, he, you know, he, he owns that $5 million no-show apartment that remained empty. Yeah, exactly, Doc. The fucking, those are in Trump buildings. He's dumping, he's literally paying Trump during the Trump presidency, you dumb motherfucker. Good Lord. You should be asking all these questions are the Department of Justice, the SDNY, the FBI, because they have troves of evidence that back up what was going on. This involved the Chinese Communist Party. They were and Donald Trump were doing a transaction with Rosneft, which was a Russian sanctioned U.S. sanctioned company at the time. And the Biden family was right front and center in the middle of it. No, they weren't. You were setting up the CEFC deal. CFC was trying to buy into Rosneft from the other fucking direction as part of the, the Belt and Road. Huh? Tony B has troves of evidence linking... Tony B. Yeah, it's Tony B. I, I had no idea. They called him Tony B. It's so great. And, and Joe Biden's using, like, the Senate as a shield that he's, like, hiding behind. Like a coward who's actually in battle because, obviously, you wouldn't pick up a shield unless you were actually in kind of kind of an older he looks like old steve rogers there but okay 
Yeah. The Biden clam, the international criminal act. Why did the FBI never follow up with Tony B? They did. And he wouldn't hand over his fucking phone, dum dum. Activity. And the FBI never conducted a follow up interview after he went public four years ago. The Treasury Department flagged 150 suspicious activity reports. No. Right. Anything over $10,000. It's standard. Here's the question. How many suspicious activity reports have uh, the banks that have accounts for the Trump organization had? I'm going to guess it's in the thousands. Tens of thousands, maybe, over the years. Action. Money was flowing from the red Chinese right to Joe Biden's personal checking account. No, it wasn't. If it was flowing from the red Chinese right to Joe Biden's checking account, A, uh, it'd be in Yuan. Uh, B, there would not be any bing, bong, bing, bong, boppity, boppity, boo thing that Trump does about where it goes before it got to him. And it wouldn't, it, it, you know where it wouldn't go? is through AmeriCorps. On August 4th, a hundred... $27,000 is wired into Owasco PC from CEFC infrastructure. On August 14, 2017, there is $150,000 that is transferred from Owasco PC, which is controlled by Hunter Biden, to Lion Hall Group, which is controlled by James. No. Uh, well, James okay. Biden. We the, have the. I don't know what the controlled by means. They were both in that deal. They both got paid. It was basically being dissolved. Deposit reference into Sarah Jones Biden's account on the same. Right. Yes. This the 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 clear sign of a criminal enterprise is a very strong paper trail. You can always tell when a criminal mastermind is at work because they keep receipts in triplicate. And they should withdraw it from Lion Hall on September 3rd, 2007, from Sarah Biden's own person. 2007. Dear God, time travel is possible. Two thousand seven. Who cares? Biden was being sanctioned. Two thousand seven. Things happened before they even existed. I mean, honestly. Personal account. There is a check that is written to to Joseph Robinette Biden Jr., the president of the United States. To Day for f yeah, today he's the president of the United States. Um, on that day, he was her brother in law and not a federal employee. He was, for all practical purposes, a federal retiree. I mean, if we're still talking about 2017 and not 2007, which by the way would be before he was even vice president. Man, I got to say what you will about the Chinese, but they're great at predicting the future in reverse. $40,000 signed loan repayment, a loan repayment, by the way, that Joe Biden's own personal accountant, Mr. Eric Who didn't work with them at that time. Eric Schwerin has no record for. You heard that? Right, because they took, because uh, James took that money from the trust. He withdrew it from the trust, and so he had to pay it back to his brother to pay through the trust. Again, in 2017. So fucking what? Right? Joe Biden's own accountant testified under oath. <laughs> that he'd never seen the handwritten checks and the ones that they deposited in their bank like normal fucking people. Jesus Christ, man. Stop talking about this like it's fucking gold bars. We're not talking about Bob Menendez. I, seriously. I At least... If if they if the Bidens are this giant family corruption machine, what? Why are they writing checks on their kitchen counter? Why is there such a clear paper trail for payments and repayments? Why would you? Why wouldn't he cash it out? Did they, for that kind of money, you can't fly to another country and 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 on you know get eighty cents on the dollar for something and and get it in cash and right? Like a real criminal? Jesus Christ, there's not even crypto involved. That there was no record that this was a loan repayment? It was. Yeah, there was. It, the, the record is the memo line because they put it in there. 
and that he ex- he got that money out of the of the trust that they had. It was a bribe from China. For what? For him to ruin their entire economy and destroy their technological future and keep them from getting the highest level of computer chips that exist in the world that are made in the United States, created in the United States, and printed in Taiwan, which is one of the things they think they want to take over. Have, is there a sing? Here's the question: Is there a single Trump tariff or restriction on the Chinese that Joe Biden hasn't doubled? Seriously. Because I, I, what are I got to say? It, if the Chinese were bribing Joe Biden, he screwed them. Hunter Biden was asked during his deposition, how many times did you pay for your father's household expenses? Over a hundred? And Hunter Biden said, I don't know. Because, A, who gives a shit? What are you talking about? Restocking the fucking fridge? Shutters? uh, Hiring Roto-Rooter? $24 million in foreign wires to the Bidens. No. Bobolinsky's not a a Biden. Rob Walker's not a Biden. James Gillier is not a Biden. Galavani or Galavanius or whatever is not a Biden. One and a half million dollars missing in cash. At least two missing. Wait a minute. The Bidens. One and a half million dollars missing in cash. At least. Uh, citation needed. These two missing diamonds, and the investigation just started, and it's being stoned. Just started? Did, what the? Just started? Good lord! Yeah, that's a that's the thing about. I didn't even know who this Comer guy was. I'm just learning about him now. We're all Bidens. Yeah, it's like Francie. It's like it's like Negan. Stonewalled <laughs> at the highest levels. Democrats had a hard time facing the facts today. No, they really didn't. Quote, 10% held by H for the big guy, question mark. You remember that, right? Oh, this he's going to show uh, the, uh, nobody responded. He's going, yeah, they responded to it. He, he goes, correct. What I mean is nobody responded to the big guy, calling him the big guy or leave the big guy out of this or yeah, the big guy's not interested or big guy. Nobody ever said big guy except you. Uh, the infamous e- uh, email with the big guy? Yes, yeah. I do. Um, did anyone ever respond to that email? Yes, they did numerous times. Sorry. Hunter Biden ever, himself excuse me, did. Excuse me. I, you're right. Well, no, did I think that's ever, important sir, because Hunter Biden has claimed res- that he didn't can you respond to it and he responded okay. to it. The, you're three just going to filibuster. I reclaim my time that's running out. We're back to a. Yeah, they cut around the part where he goes, yeah, he. Uh, did anybody respond to the use of the phrase the big guy because that came from James Gilliar, not from the Bidens? Hearing where no evidence is being provided of any sort of wrong. Also, by the way, um, we have seen multiple times since this shit has come out that they refer to Donald Trump as the big guy. Um, his, Don Jr. has done it multiple times. We've seen people that used to be in his cabinet. Some of the campaign people have called Donald Trump, uh, Donald Trump the big guy over time, which I would think that this this was in like injected into this bullshit in an attempt to try and obfuscate the big guy getting really paid off in terms of, again, no-show apartments in New York City. I'm doing by the president, but I want to go that, back. That's Mr. a blatant Bobo, lie. Actually, it's my time, sir. What you stated. I did not call the what FBI What was stated agents right liars. before that was, first of all, I said that I'm speaking, and I did not ask you a question. <laughs> so this was the first time an actual eyewitness to the Biden enterprise testified. Eyewitness? He didn't meet him till 2017, you dumb son of a bitch. Who was president in 2017? I'll tell you who. The guy that Yi Jen Ming paid $5 million for at least one apartment that we know of. Now that Bobolinsky's talking about $50 million for apartments, maybe he's got apartments in more of these fucking buildings. Oh my God, can you imagine on Monday they start selling these properties? And they go through who owns what and what's been bought and, you know, what they owe and own of the building itself, right? And it turns out, like, they're, like who, the fucking cockroaches that are going to come to the surface when they go through who owns pieces of these buildings. 
Because again, one of the biggest fears for Donald Trump selling his stake in these buildings is that it's not really his money. And it hasn't been for a long fucking time. And that the people who own big chunks of his building, either in direct units or as, in, or as you know, silent investors, are some skeevy fucking people. ...publicly. And the Democrats weren't prepared. Did you deal? witness the what? president commit it's, it's, a crime? Is it your test? Oh, this is the RICO part. Good Lord. Testimony today. Yes. And what crime do you uh, have you witnessed? How much time do I have to go through it? Corruption statutes, it, RICO and conspiracy. What, what cons yes, what corruption statute did you witness, motherfucker? You didn't meet the guy until he no longer was in office. What corrupt, how do you corrupt someone in a job they don't have? How do, how do you pay for influence to someone who can't actually influence anything anymore at that point? What? What Here's is it? What is, Sarah. what is the crime, sir? You, you, Specifically. You, just, uh, you keep, uh, you asked me to answer the question. I answered the question. No. Rico, you're obviously not familiar with corruption. Excuse statute. me, sir. Excuse Sarah. me, sir. Excuse me, sir. Rico is not a crime. It is a category. What is know. the crime? It's a category crime? of crimes. <laughs> Fanny charged Trump with Rico in Georgia, AOC. No, she didn't, you dumb son of a bitch. She didn't charge him with Rico. She charged him under the Rico statute with a myriad of crimes, including obstruction of justice and witness tampering and all the shit that goes with Rico. You don't just charge somebody with fucking Rico unless it's me and it's Suave. Who's about the veto? Gavato about the veto? Vas about the veto? Not the veto. Rico suave. I'm just saying. Okay, I'm Rico suave. Um, I got a bandana and a long coat and just let my chest hang out. It's gonna be a thing. I'm gonna need to be very tan though. So if Rico's not a crime, I guess Trump's fine. Rico's not a crime, you dumb motherfucker. It's a category of crime under Rico. He was charged with a conspiracy with a bunch of other crimes. And he coordinated those crimes. The RICO part is where you can charge everyone equally, stupid. This, see what I mean, though? This is what I was talking about. This is, this is like the mind-numbingly stupid part of this. This is bungholio-level dumb. Right? This is, I'm looking for a TV for my bunghole. I am, I am bungholio. Um, that's, uh, it's, it's a special kind of stupid. Yeah. But honestly, um, uh, Rico Suave didn't have stubble, by the way. He was fresh faced. Someone had said I was going to have to grow stubble for this. No, uh, as a matter of fact, I would guess from the video that he's got very little stubble anywhere. If you know what I mean? Biden flies his son around. I'm going to have to get a fucking Brazilian if I'm going to pull that off. <laughs> around the world to cut deals, invites his son's partners to the White House, has phone calls and meetings with him, drops sanctions. Uh, uh, no. He's on a phone and he says hi and asks how the weather are. That's not a phone call with them. Having a meeting with somebody after you're out of office is not a crime. Also, that didn't turn into anything. His son tried to start a business with this dude and he was like, this is the guy I'm going to work with. And by the way, his son's an addict at the time and his father is policing his life to try and keep him alive on them greases regs for them gets their kids into colleges greases regs name one gets their kids into college he wrote a recommendation letter for one person who was a friend now i get it he's chinese and all jesse waters knows about chinese people is that he used to go down to chinatown in new york with a with a microphone and a crew and and be racist to them and he gets his entire extended family from sons, brothers to grandkids. Jesse Water from Burke. Kids paid Same. millions. Cars, cash, diamonds, expensive scotch. The scotch went th th the other way, stupid. They bought the scotch and gave it to the Chinese dude. They didn't. I. Okay. Man, is this what happens when you. You consider yourself like family values Republicans, but then you vote for a pussy grabber. Like you have no idea which way, how consent works or how interactions actually work. What what direction 
A, B logic is always B, A logic. It doesn't fucking matter. Is that what happens to your fucking brain? Is this your brain on maggot? And he uses an alias. Joe Biden uses an alias. They use you use an alias, you dumb son of a bitch. There's no fucking way his email is Jesse Waters at Fox News. Seriously, what is it? What's your fucking email? What kind of uh, what kind of an asshole in uh, that's at, in the fucking administration of the United States of America would use their first and last name at whitehouse.gov to actually conduct business. Are you... Yes, you are. You're stupid. I was about to say, are you completely stupid? And he is. Um, how the fuck would you get anything done? Jesus Christ. If I have my whole name in an email, I, it just... And I'm me. I'm just, you know, cable television guy who happens to be adorable. But imagine being the fucking vice president. You don't think... Like, and just for national security. What the fuck? <laughs> of course he used an alias. And of course they had different ones for different shit. So that if one gets out, the rest of the whole thing isn't compromised, dummy. What the fuck kind of... <laughs> First of all, Donald Trump doesn't even use email. Because that phrase you kept hearing from uh, Galavani, Galavanis, and uh, and Rob Walker, you know, uh, uh, say it, forget it, write it, regret it. That's a Trump organization thing. That's why Trump doesn't use email. Do you ever notice Trump emails just don't show up? You ever notice also that uh, the text messages that are getting him in trouble come from Walt Nada's fucking phone. Walt Nada testified under oath that he loaned his phone to Trump to text someone. He uses other people's phones to send messages so he has plausible deniability that he wrote it. So he can throw you under the fucking bus. And he only does it to the people who are genuinely, like, involved in the crime with him. So they can't turn. His burner phones to talk. Biden's donors paid his family's back taxes. And? You know who aren't his donors? You know you know his donors have to be? Americans. Also, just because he gave money to them and donated the maximum, that's not this. Helping his son out because he's a family member. By the way, it's weird. It should be fucking weird to you that, like, Mary Trump will never give money, much less vote for her uncle. She will not give money to the Trump campaign, and she will not vote for that motherfucker. But everybody around the Bidens is happy to give the max and help out in any way they can because he's a real fucking person with actual friends and a life. Could Don Jr. stiff the IRS and his dad's donors square it up before an election? Come on. No, because he doesn't have any friends that would bail him out. <laughs> no. Investigators have delivered eyewitness testimony. Yeah, that, that, that's, that sentence stick out to you, too? Come on. Investigators have delivered eyewitness testimony. Okay, first of all, you're talking about a guy who didn't even meet Biden until he was out of office. And as far as eyewitness testimony, that literally everybody who's in here was like talking about phone calls that happened in another room that they weren't present for. Bobolinsky even fucking testified about the content of the phone call that Hunter made that is that that Joe was sitting there. There is no fucking way he knows if he was there or not there. It's absurd. What the fuck kind of eyewitness testimony is going? I, yeah, of course he was sitting right there. How do you know? Because he said so. Did he say anything while he was on drugs that turned out not to be true? Yeah, he cheated me out of the fucking thing. All right, so... Maybe he's not completely forthcoming or he uses leverage that he has, perhaps. Bank records. Mountains of circumstantial evidence plus... Yeah, mountains of circumstantial evidence. Well, I, you know, I thought... Weren't we on our, like, 19th fucking uh, smoking gun at this point? Motive, physical evidence, digital communications, photographs. 
did photographs voice photograph wait well you got to mix those you got those mixed up photographs of di digital evidence the dudes submitted photos phone pic pictures taken with his phone of his other phone <laughs> the fuck out of here he smells jesse jr could prosecute this case well uh then i gotta say uh, jesse jr is uh you're turning your son into an authoritarian who would only work in a gulag because this is nonsense do you believe he should be impeached i do okay and you believe that because you believe chairman comer has proven that he committed a high crime and misdemeanor no because i know that he committed high crimes and misdemeanors okay i was involved and saw them happen <laughs> how you didn't even meet him till he was out of office you can't commit high crimes and misdemeanors if you're not in office. You can't. It doesn't work that way. This dumb motherfucker didn't even meet him until Trump was president. What are you talking about? The extent of his meeting him was from 2017 to 2018. That was the length of the entire fucking relationship that he was even fucking loosely around. You can't commit a high crime and misdemeanor, and you didn't, sure as fuck didn't witness anything while the guy wasn't in office. It doesn't make any fucking sense. The Democrats say there's no evidence. The media reports there's no evidence. And, the and I'm here to tell you, there's no evidence. Here's a, hey, motherfucker, him saying he witnessed something that happened during the Trump presidency isn't evidence. You know who's saying there's no evidence? You are. You dumb fuck. Jesse Waters is saying there's no evidence. You know how? Because saying there's evidence when there is none is the same as saying there is none. The material impact on the world, the justice system, the legal ramifications of said activities, it's exactly the same. Saying there's evidence that doesn't exist and having no evidence at all is the same thing. It's just one comes from a dick. Four-year cover-up continues. Four-year cover-up. Four-year cover-up. What, of things that happened while Trump was president? So looking at the calendar, I don't see the committee moving towards an official impeachment this year. I just don't. <laughs> well, it's not the calendar. It's the fucking mounds of circumstantial evidence. Personally... I believe there was sufficient evidence to start impeachment last year, but that's just me. Right, that's just you um, and Tony Bobolinsky, and both of you are full of shit. Here's a good idea. I got a good idea. Why don't you help? Jesse, instead of just yapping and uh, sitting there with those two fucking giant caterpillars on your forehead, why don't you do this? Why don't you uh, Photoshop some messages between you and Hunter Biden post-datum to 2016 and go, thanks for introducing me to that Chinese spy and uh, I, she was hot and also the, the diamonds are in the mailbox and then take a picture of that with your fucking phone and then call James Comer. He'll let you testify. And then you can come in and go, I was a witness to things that happened while uh, Joe Biden was president. What did you witness? Uh, I witnessed words appear on my phone that implicate him in a crime. Can we see your phone? No. Oh, so you just like Bobolinsky? Yes. Now the committee's up against a political clock. Some are... <laughs> no, they aren't. No, they aren't. They're not up against a political clock, you dumb motherfucker. They're, they're up against an empty fucking box. Tens of thousands of pages of financial documents, m m like myriad testimony from dozens of fucking people, and the box of evidence is fucking empty. Recess, conventions, and the politicians, they have to campaign for re-elections. <laughs> well, it's stopping them from charging Trump. So they're not going to be in... What are, what are the Republicans, just a bunch of wussies? Like, 
like Democrats can apparently corral the whole DOJ and big tech and big pharma and big entertainment and big dick, and they can get everybody all working in concert to attack Donald Trump and still campaign at the same time. But the fucking House Republicans, what the fuck do they have to do? None of their witnesses are running for office, and they're not going to get the president because they don't have anything. Washington for impeachment hearings. And an impeachment in October could be silly with weeks before an election. Yeah, silly's one word for it. So the committee's going to keep grinding. Yeah, you know, like an asshole who doesn't know how to drive stick. Nah, nah, nah. Um, a clutching. Chatter. Nah, nah. <laughs> yeah, they're going to keep grinding, all right. Uh, why? Why can't? any of this just be true just can't can i just wish it true <laughs> we're still ex why would you uh, oh fuck why would you be grinding if you have all this evidence why right if you're up to your fucking eyeballs in evidence and it's clear as day and blah blah, blah and you have witnesses and all this shit what grinding do you have to do except maybe some fresh a uh, fresh pot of coffee expecting credit card records from multiple banks and the offshore accounts, which the IRS whistleblowers confirm exist, are being protected by the DOJ. Hold on. For an election. So the committee's going to keep grinding. Mm -hmm. We're still expecting credit card records from multiple banks and the offshore... Yes, that's the other way you commit a big crime. I mean, I don't know if you know this, but the Gambino family were busted because they kept all... The, the, they use they put everything on Visa. <laughs> do you uh, do you think he even listens to himself? Credit credit card receipts. Cr cr what were they? What were the Chinese doing? Bribing him with credit. Credit card receipts. Shut the fuck up. Sure accounts, which the IRS whistleblowers confirm exist. Yeah, they're Rob Walker and Devin Archers. That's where the money flowed through for the fucking uh, car, the, the Porsche. Janamona. Are being protected by the DOJ. Yeah, no, they're not. But saying that keeps you from having to actually admit they don't exist. But if Trump wins and finds Biden's offshore accounts. Yeah, he could. He, uh, uh, let, me, let me explain something, you dickhead. Um, Trump says that Biden cheated in the election and he, when he wasn't even in power. You think Trump can... He, he ran on lock her up. Remember that? Hillary's still out walking around. I know your QAnon friends have told you she's been hanged twice at Guantanamo. They hung her, cloned her, and then hung her clone just to... Just, ah, because they hated her so much. Even though... Technically speaking, the clone would be completely innocent, and and uh, even though it looks old, somehow they found found a way to age it to her exact uh, um, specifications. She, it's still technically uh, an infant. So Republicans uh, and QAnon people are arguing that you should kill a baby after it's born, just as long as it looks like an old lady. I don't care what Robert Hur says. You're going to see a sympathetic elderly man with a hazy memory on trial. If Biden wins re-election and the He's going to. Republicans keep the House, then they'll have time for impeachment. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, they'll have plenty of time. I mean, they won't be busy trying to solve the problems of the American people. What are they going to do? Let's see. Uh, try to go after bullshit China money thing one more time or sit here with my thumb up my ass and regret not having trimmed my cuticles. Hmm. This year, though, it's more about what the American people believe and how. No, it isn't. It, it's not. You can tell yourself that because you're trying to make them believe something that isn't true. I don't give a fuck what I believe even about these things. I can have feelings even about Trump shit. But what matters is what happens in court. What evidence is presented, what a jury thinks or what a judge thinks, and how that plays out. I can have my feelings about it all I want, but it's not going to actually amount to a fucking hill of beans. 
I can feel, nobody feels their way into fucking jail, dummy. It impacts their vote. Everyone knows Biden's corrupt. No, no, they don't. If they did, if everyone knew he was corrupt, um, well, actually two things. If they knew he was corrupt, if everyone knew he was corrupt, uh, again, the committee wouldn't have to grind, right? They just fucking 20 minutes a day, call it, and he'd be impeached in a matter of, you know, by the weekend, right? But how about this? Let's take him at his word, right? Let's assume, yeah? Let's assume uh, that, uh, that that part is true, that everybody knows Biden is corrupt. That means that things are going so good, they don't give a fuck. Because it's it would call what I would call the uh, the mob buffet syndrome. As long as the spread's nice, nobody wants to say a fucking thing, right? That's the argument. This asshole inadvertently is making a case that Joe Biden is kicking so much ass and being such a good president that even though everybody knows, everybody knows he's corrupt as fuck, they're willing to look past it because of all the good he's doing for the country. <laughs> Great job, Jesse. Well done. Well played, dum-dum. We just have to vote him out. Click here to subscribe. No, I'm not gonna. Nope, nope, nope. Um, <laughs> be bobbering where you been. I'm, you know, rocking and rolling and whatnot. <laughs> um, tee hee hee hee. I gotta put the, uh, Hold on. Bing. I want to put two things up here. One is the chat ISO thing. So I want to start putting that where I can I can get to it on the regular LAR um, in case I decide to jump in there. Uh, it's really pissing you off. Don't let it because it's just a waste of fucking time. It's hilarious. It's terrific. Um, House of Cards. Everybody knows a dingle and a froofy do. Yes, uh, yeah, um, yes, uh, salt and grease, you can unclench now. Everybody knows they're lying sacks of shit. Yes, I would agree. Ah, Benny, Diane, Trucker, John, Raid, thank you. Oh, look, I'm, I'm, it's like I'm being censored. They're the, uh, I've been raided by the deep state. I'm just kidding. Hi, I'll just stick down here. <laughs> hey, you know. I, I got to tell you, I, I you know, whatever. I You know, I was making it like, the other day. Um, I, I was like, we need to start writing like little handwritten notes online. Like Donald Trump does not have to pay his uh, um, his bond and can, and can be excused from putting giving the money out. Um, signed Epstein's Mar-a-Lago um, or Epstein's Madam would be better. <laughs> Just signed Epstein's Madam. Suddenly Hal has a secret witness. That's right. Um, hold on. I, I think we like. Do I, yeah. No, that's not the right one. Yeah, this would be it. Um, I really, uh, I would rather, as a witness, I'm afraid to come forward because I'm afraid the Bidens will, uh, force me to come to family gatherings and eat ice cream. It's, I'm, I'm fucking terrified, you know? Who lives like that, you know? They're always like, come on, one more scoop. What am I fucking supposed to do? Jesus Christ. Um, <laughs> thank you. Junior begging for $5 on Forbes. Oh, yeah, it's 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 a good time. Um, Kath needs snacks, by the way, just saying. Uh, this whole thing, I gotta say, is uh, is working like a charm. Made a Lego, that's funny. As somebody, uh, you, you know there's a maggot someplace that made a Lego version of Mar-a-Lago, right? Or maybe, or, or are they that, they're just not that good? Yeah. So Biden's got diamonds? Yes, uh, the, the the Chinese dude from CFC gave uh, Hunter Biden a diamond. He gave it to uh, James to get it appraised, and it turned out to be fake. Now, if you don't watch the China show, uh, which is different than China money, on Fridays, uh, they live stream um, Serpent ZA and Lao Y86. 
Um, these guys like know China like I know China, but better because they spent even more time there. Um, both of them have Chinese wives. Both of them lived there and worked there for uh, you know over a decade. So, um, like you want to talk about what's fake over there besides building materials and all that kind of shit. You'll not be surprised. You, you, well, here, shit. Hold on. Let me see if I can find. Let's go in here. Um, <clears throat> Let me slide this up real quick. Uh, maybe here we go. Um. Okay, <laughs> now I'm seeing all these, like, China's fucked articles. Um, here's, here's, what, uh, here's what apparently, oh, this is good. This is, I want to show you guys, apparently what um, the Chinese got for bribing Joe Biden. Um, let's see, and then... Um, so, let me open up, silly. Okay, there you go. This is uh, um, a, a thing about like, oh shit, open up the right page, silly. Um, where is it? There it is. Shut down, you silly page. Go away. I don't want it. It's got this, uh, hold on. There you go. Um, yeah, I have to shrink this page down. I had an ad come up. Okay, here you go. Um, so, uh, De Beers fights, uh, fakes with technology as China's lab grown diamonds threaten viability of real gems. So, uh, they're effectively flawless because they can be made that way because they're synthetic. And what the fuck is the difference? Yada, yada, yada. Um, other than the, the grown ones have mystical powers. You'll have to talk to Marianne Williamson about that, but the uh, synthetic ones probably work just as well. China Marnie! Um, that said, um, uh, this is what they're talking about. That the, when, the, when the Chinese hand you a diamond, eh, now the chances are it's not the real thing. That's, that's why he went, eh, check it out. Um, now, Here's what you, you guys, and I, this would be good for Jesse Waters, and then I'll move on. Um, Jesse Waters wants to, n n I'm sure like everybody else at Fox knows, Mar uh, Maria Bartiromo asks this all the time. What did China get in exchange? What did China get in exchange? They bribed the Bidens with tens of dollars. And what did they get? They obviously expected something. And here's what they got. China's vowed to save its crashing stock market, but investors are just not convinced. China's economy has a new problem. It's job market. China's all-important property market shows no sign of rebound in the new year. That's, uh, that's, that's what they got. What we get with Joe Biden? We got a, we got a, a Dow that's about to hit 40K. 39.781. It is up 269 today. Record after fucking record. The economy is so hot that the Fed keeps having to punt raising in, or lowering interest rates. Meanwhile, this is what China got for bribing the Bidens. The Bidens apparently berated them on the phone and then skull fucked their economy. Oh, hi, Lisa. Oh, that's great. You're babysitting two puppies. That's sweet. Hold on. Think, um, babysitting two puppies and two kitties. Uh, well, sorry, two papoos, which are a different animal altogether. They have scales, right? I might be wrong. Um, thank you so much. And, and she's babysitting them in Canada. Um, exactly. Uh, Mark, thanks, President Biden. <laughs> yeah. Can I? Can 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 somebody just insist? Like, can everybody just go tell Maria Bartiromo to have me on her show so I can set her straight on all this shit? Because it, I promise not to cuss. But then so did Texas Paul, and look what happened. But I, I can do it. I know I can do it. All right, next up. Um, 
Oh, God. Oh, Lord. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. So let's go to this. Uh, Peter Navarro reported to jail today. Um, I guess trying to, I guess trying to blend in with a, with the guards. It's like, maybe if I wear something that looks like something a guard would wear, if it's chilly out on the yard and I could probably hop the fence and fuck off, whatever. Um, this is his uh, statement outside. This is a, uh, one of, I think six members of the, uh, Trump administration that have either been sentenced to jail and were pardoned by him or had their sentence commuted or were charged and and he's the first one going to jail. Yeah, this was yesterday. So, um, here we go. All right, uh, here's what I'm gonna do. Um, I'm gonna make a brief statement. Um, I'll take a, a few uh, pertinent and relevant questions. Uh, and, then, uh, and then, and then, then I'm going to go to jail. There. So the, the little story here. I'm going over there. To prison. Uh, is the bar I was going to prison today. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm, uh, you guys cool with that, right? Yeah. Dude, you tried to flee. Uh, you guys will uh, certainly focus on that little story but, but no it's kind of a big story it's just not you're just not the big fish it's just kind of it's like one of those historic moments like oh yeah congratulations you're in the, you're in the guinness book and the history books for what something shitty sorry it's like it's like when you find out like i made it mom i'm in the guinness book for what biggest tapeworm fucking hell what i suggest to you as as journalists is that there's two really it is a, you suggest to me, a felon. Really bigger stories that you might want to report on in Sudan. I agree. Oh, you don't mean Sudan. And even uh, do some research on uh, because these are, these are big issues. This is not about me. Uh, yeah, it is. I mean, you could try and go, look, it's not about me being criminally liable and going to fucking jail and being a prick and uh, being and going on Ari Melber and bragging about the pl the the Green Bay plan or whatever strategy to steal the election and all this shit and and eventually when I did end up avoiding a subpoena and going to jail thinking I could just ex uh, I could just call executive privilege for myself without the president actually doing it which is not how it fucking works. There's no auto executive privilege. He has to he he has to assert it. The only prop person you have a problem with is Donald fucking Trump because he was the only guy who could exert it and he didn't. And then you tried to take it on the heel and toe. Uh, one of the big stories is is fresh meat. No, I'm sorry. About what is really um an unprecedented assault on the constitutional separation of powers. I, I, I'm sorry. I, were you arrested crossing the Potomac in a raft? And the uh, doctrine of executive privilege is a, is, a, is a critical tool dating back to George Washington for effective presidential decision making. I... Oh, it's really important. It's so important. Most of us would think that uh, Donald Trump would have exerted it for you just as a mensch, just because he could have. Shit, he could have done it years ago. He could have done it for everybody. Remember how everybody, including yourself, were shopping around for a fucking pardon? One of the things he really could have done was exert executive privilege over everybody. Just throw an envelope of secrecy. But he... But he didn't, you dumb motherfucker. He didn't. He threw you to the wolves. I walk in that prison today, the justice system, such as it is, will have done a crippling blow to the constitutional separation of powers. I'm going to talk a crippling blow. I'm not, I don't want to. Executive privilege. The second and related story. So it is all about you. My bad. Has to do with the emergence of lawfare and the partisan weaponization 
of our justice system. Right. And the weird thing is Donald Trump wouldn't even take a a, a nerf bullet for you, you dumb motherfucker. He would He didn't have he didn't even have to throw himself in front of the gun. He could have fucking neoed that shit and he didn't. You know why? Cuz he doesn't give a shit about you. Uh which we have seen come to this country with a vengeance. Since the coming of Donald John Trump as president, uh, and... Yeah, I mean, I, I would say if there was anybody who tried to weaponize the DOJ, it was him. I mean, he was shuffling heads of that organization and trying to run interference against investigations into himself. And of course, he was seeking out his own Roy Cohn. That sounds pretty much like the weaponization, yeah, of uh, the Justice Department since the, he came into office. But that keeps getting worse. So let me walk you through those two stories. And- before I walk through those doors and uh, prove that I'm not smuggling anything. And again, I'm hoping as journalists, you will you will do some background, some research. I'm, 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 I'm asking you to fact check everything I say today. Uh, already on it. Don't worry about it. Uh, and write the bigger stories here, which I think are the important ones. So let's... Yeah, the, the big story isn't this asshole, uh, you know, was caught up in a scheme to defraud every voter in America, even his uh, his party's own voters, or uh, that he's a consummate bullshit artist. It's the, the big story is that Donald Trump wouldn't even bother to pick up the phone to save this guy from going to jail. Steve Bannon, he gets a pardon. You don't even get a fucking phone call. Let's talk about some facts here. I am... The first senior White House advisor mm-hmm. in the history of our republic to be let uh, like left out to dry by your president that has ever been charged with this alleged crime. It's not alleged. You you did it, dummy. You were you, you bragged about it. That was the point. You were you were insisting that you were allowed to do the thing, and it's a crime, and you're not. So. And I say alleged because you're an asshole for hundreds of years. Uh, this is not. <laughs> you don't look that old. Been a crime, and for Thank 50 you, Carol. Oh my years, gosh. the Department of Justice has maintained the principle of absolute testimony immunity, and it was only with my case that somehow uh, that has changed. Then. Here's, here's where the homework is, because the big constitutional separation of powers um, are these. Can Congress compel a senior White House advisor, what they call the alter ego of a president, to testify? The you're, Wait a minute. You're the alter ego of the president? First of all, um, uh, I, I, the alter or otherwise, the ego involved in this statement is fucking hilarious. But, um, what, what's the, yeah, which one's Jekyll is a great question. So you're the, you're the good version of Donald Trump. Cause what you'll steal the election and lie to people and obfuscate and, and avoid, uh, you know, the justice system and try to evade, uh, you know, capture and all this shit, but you won't grab women by the pussy. Is that the. No, of course he'd probably do that. Well, Congress and and executive privilege goes back to George Washington. Yeah, yeah, it was first started. Nobody, nobody in the boat talked. It was lonely. This is between us. Now somebody find my teeth. And his remarks to the uh, Congress regarding the Jay Treaty, and he said very simply and clearly, succinctly, elegantly. I, uh, I I think there should be such a thing as executive privilege, but a president should have to actively assert it as opposed to just being kind of an automatic veil of secrecy over the whole thing because that goes against our very democracy. <laughs> I'm just fucking with you. That to write to the Congress, he said, I cannot command you as members of Congress to come to me. You cannot command me to come to you. 
save it for jail. <laughs> that's, uh, that's, I think that's written, um, on the wall in cell block C. And the reason is the constitutional separation of powers. And as the legal doctrines have, have evolved, and the Supreme Court has been very adamant about the sanctity of executive privilege. Which you have to assert, and he didn't. Okay. That. Why don't you just keep reminding us that Trump did not exert executive privilege over you? And. <laughs> privilege has extended to what's called alter egos of the president. It's such a weird term. I've never heard anybody call it that before. It's so odd. Which is what I am as one of his highest advisors. And. Were and only temporarily. The, the, the principle here related to effective presidential decision making Thank is you, simply you. that if a president does not have the Thank ability you, between and among his advisors to get confidential information in the sanctity of the Oval Office, he will make poor decisions which will harm the Republic. That well. Um, I, I, I have no doubt that on occasion, the American people and the general will of the public can diverge from their best interests. One might only look at the actual election of Donald Trump, for example, which again, I don't lay at the feet of Republicans. They thought they were electing a businessman and it was just time to give it a shot. And we need an outsider and all that bullshit we've heard forever. It was the faux aggressives that helped him that I blame. And it's on us that he got into office. And all the damage that he did is no use whinging about, the, you know, or acting shocked that women's rights got fucking scrubbed, right? Because that was on us. We left that gate open. And it's not going to happen again. Uh, but the idea that this dumb fuck can just, I, I mean, I guess he's just putting it off. I, I'd keep talking too. I, uh, I mean, uh, anyway, I still have some, a couple of things to say. Um, um, is, does anybody have any soap on a rope? Like, that kind of shit. Yada, yada. That's what this is about. That's what this is about. And as this case has worked through the legal process. You mean the courts where you were found guilty and sentenced to jail? There are a number of big issues. It worked its way. It did work its way through. It, it, you know, kind of like food works its way through a colon and ends up in the shit like you are. That we will be going through um, on the appeal uh, that uh, Mr. Woodward in the back there um, will lead with, with Stan Brand. Uh, mm -hmm. Which will take as long as the time you are. Does anybody know how long he was? Uh, I didn't even. I, I, I haven't even bothered i'm just so i was so glad uh um um let's see is there a convicted of contempt um gn6 a uh, maximum of one year jesus christ he's gonna be he's gonna be yammering at this fucking thing he got four months yeah max was jesus christ man you're gonna this press conference is longer than his sentence. Uh, two of the finest scholars in this area uh, imaginable. So the, the issues again. No, no. I'll tell you what. It, stop saying that shit. Because I got to tell you, if my lawyer, if I was going to jail, I would not say of my lawyers, they were the finest imaginable. Because I got news for you. There are a lot of situations where I would be imagining not going to fucking jail. Stupid. <laughs> Imaginable. <laughs> Jesus. What are you doing? Uh, what are you doing? <laughs> Peter, what are you, what are you, you? You seem lost. Uh, I was just imagining not having to go to jail and imagining having lawyers that could have could have actually gotten me off. And I couldn't do it. And please do your research. It's, can Congress compel someone like me to testify? The answer has been yes. no. Yes, they can. Yes, they can. Unless the president uses executive privilege, in which case it's harder, but it's not impossible. And of course, yes, they can. Yeah, they can. Yes, they can. Ever since George Washington 
said that to the Jay Treaty. Uh, yeah, but I don't think they understood him as yeah, his wooden teeth were slipping. Um, what constitutes executive privilege? Is uh, well, it's a it is a, a reasonable amount of secrecy in the Oval Office for the sake of arguing the good and bad points of very important decisions in the Oval Office, and the president has the right to exert that in le in so far as people wanting to look into those conversations at any time. He just decided, fuck you. Is it presumptive? If not presumptive, what is a formal invocation look like? In my case, um... A, f a formal invocation? Trump could have just said it. I had an evidentiary hearing for the first time in history. I presented just a mountain of direct testimony and circumstantial evidence related to emails, correspondence, phone calls, and visits with the president and his top aides. And at the end of that day, all Trump had to do was pick up the fucking phone and say, I am, ex uh, I, I think he's covered under executive privilege. Would have been so fucking easy. And he didn't. And so you tried to catch a plane out of town. The judge made. And then get a ticket from what? Mike Flynn to go to Turkey or something. Made the novel choice to say privilege had not been invoked. And it was. Mm, it's rough. Yeah. I, yeah. It's, it's, it's hard. I don't know how. Yeah. The, the novel part where. You know, it was novel. If I do say so, my damn self. The novel part might have been that your president didn't bother. Absurd. It was probably the most absurd element of this case. So so the appeals court and then the... No, I think this uh, press conference stacks right up against... The Supreme Court will, 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 will ponder that issue, and it's a really uh, important issue. A third issue has... Yeah, exactly. Show up and plead the fifth, you dumb motherfucker, or exert... Have the president exert executive privilege or roll on him to do with the facts and and this should chill you okay if you're ever in my position i am chilling i'm chilling who's you guys are chilling right we're chill, you know hey man i look we are chilling okay it did chill me and i'm like hey baby i'm chill it's cool when you have to go to trial it should chill you to know that the i'm chill it's all right yeah, man, I'm chilling. You guys chilling? I'm chilling. Judge, the judge uh -huh. has the discretion to strip you of any defense. Well, not any. I mean, chill, man. He doesn't have the ability to strip you of any defense. I mean, he's not alone in this. You're not in a fucking. This isn't a, a a lynch mob in the old west, dude. Before you ever get to a jury, how can that be? That can't be the law. And the way that happened in this case. Was Donald Trump wouldn't make one fucking phone call to save your dumb ass? Through the mishap. How is this our problem? I'm starting to lose my chill. Application of an antiquated, misapplied precedent of the Lord. Wait a minute. Either it's either it's a antiquated precedent, or there's never been anything like it. For it had no bearing on anything related to cases involving executive privilege. It was absurd. And in a related case... Was yeah, I don't know if this is helping your appeal. Right? Stephen K. Bannon? Think being an unrepentant dick. It, yeah. I, that wouldn't be my strategy is all I'm saying. If I was on my way to jail, I would go, fuck these judges, man. If I, I, like, it just wouldn't be my first impulse. I might feel it. But I, I wouldn't show it. I would be pretty, uh, uh, I would definitely pull the, like, let's all remember that John Wayne Gacy went to jail for sexually assaulting a minor and was sentenced to three years and got out in 15 months because he was likable. So if uh, he can play it that way, I sure as shit could get out early. Judge Nichols released him pending appeal with one line released because I think this may be reversed. And the thing that Nichols said, top of the list, was Likavoli. That's the four letter. 
Yeah, that's, believe me, that's not the first or the last time you're going to be hearing that. Your word in this case. Sorry. I'm sorry. The last issue is something called the rule of lenity. Again, put yourself in my shoes. The law. No. No, no. I'm not going to, I'm not going to put my, if I was, hey, guess what, asshole? If I was in your shoes, I'd have told Donald Trump to go fuck himself a long time ago. Do you notice there are a bunch of people who are standing with you in that same room? They're not going to jail, are they? Up to the point where I was convicted, said one thing, which is to say, I was doing my duty to this country, the Constitution, and my... Uh, <laughs> you said duty. My oath of office, according to the Department of Justice, according to, to the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. They flipped that. The rule of lenity says, if they flip that, I'm not guilty, okay? Try the next person who knows that the law has been changed, but you can't, you can't do that. So these are the big constitutions. Here's, here's what I would say. Say what you will, but you're being charged with a crime where the max is a year. Nobody who's a first time, you know, a first time offender, you know, nonviolent or whatever, and it does anywhere near that amount of time, ever. Even if they sentence you to a year, you're out in six months max, anyways. And um, so here's my here's my thing. You know how some reporters, rather than turn over a source or something like that, or it's like, nope, throw me in jail. I'll show up, throw me in fucking jail. You know, you know what? There's two upsides to that. One is you make your case that you really believe that you were doing the right thing and you feel like you're, you're, you, you martyr yourself for that particular cause, right? The other part is you don't spend millions of dollars on, you know, fighting it in court to not do four fucking months. I've always been of the opinion that one of the things that killed Lenny Bruce was just fighting the charge. If he'd have gone in, if he'd have just, you know, had them do the rest and they'd try to sentence him to the state, while he was in there, there would have been such an uproar by the public, they, he would have gotten let out and it would have changed things even faster. Now, you you know, in retrospect, this is a long time ago and jails in the 60s were fucked up way more than they are now. And certainly not the kind of situation this asshole is going to find himself in, which is cush as shit. But honestly, if you're, if you're like, I'm going to jail for the fucking president of the United States, when you get out, you're fucking made, right? Right? If you really believed all this bullshit he was saying, and you're like, in four months, I'm going to come out and be like MAGA cause celeb. But he didn't. He fought it all the way and did everything except point to the one thing about this, which is fucking Donald Trump could have solved this problem with one thing. Goddamn phone call. issues that we will fight first at the appeals court and then to the Supreme Court. Yeah. Now, let me turn to the partisan nature of this. Oh, get on with Fact it. Fact check me on this, folks. Fact check me. Okay. So far, I'm doing a fantastic job. Every person. Thank you, Carol Cobb. Who has taken me on this road to that prison is a friggin' Democrat. And a Trump hater. Fuck you. <laughs> Asshole, the only person that could have kept you out of jail is Donald Trump and he didn't give a shit. Lay that on me. Let me walk you through it. Sure. It starts with House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. Mm, well, that, and, and that'd be enough to end it as well. Who forms the J6 committee. Mm -hmm. Blows away all the rules, improperly constituted, Unduly authorized and unlawful committee. Bullshit. He puts on seven Democrats. Also, by the way, th this is like arguing statute of limitations. So far, I'm not hearing you're not guilty, just that they shouldn't have been able to look. This is the kind of person who's like, they, Your Honor, thumping and screaming is not probable cause to open someone's trunk. I shouldn't be found guilty of the two bodies and the one kidnapping because they had no right to, to, to yeah. Every single one of them, fact check every single one of those went after Donald Trump through two impeachments and the Russia hoax, and all they want to do is stop Trump. 
well, stop him from selling national secrets to the Saudis and the and the Russians, I think, and the and the North Koreans. And the two Republicans on there were not Republicans at all. Liz Cheney, who hates Donald Trump because Trump told the truth about her daddy. Her daddy killed people. Wow. Trump didn't kill anybody. 80% rise in uh, civilian deaths in his first year in office from drone strikes. Mm -hmm. More more civilian deaths from American drone strikes in the first year of the Trump administration than the entirety of the Obama administration. The Iraq and Afghanistan war, everybody in this country knows that. Mm, No, and first of all, First, uh, yeah, first of all, she's not her dad. I mean, I like her politics, but I'm not, I, I'm not going after fucking Don Jr. for what his dad does. There's plenty to get Don Jr. on. And I'm certainly not going after Barron just because he's a blood relative of the fucker. That's not how it works in this country. Pelosi, the J6 committee, they subpoenaed me. Right. You could have shown up and said... The president wants me to exert executive privilege, and they could have asked him, and he would have said it on the phone. The Congress itself, when they voted my contempt charge, a strict party vote line. If the House or a party line vote had been held by Republicans, I wouldn't be here. The Democrats pushed me what? And then we get the Department of Justice. Ugh. I mean, is that even the name they should be using anymore? I mean, they should call it the Department of Just Us because the rest of us are all fucked, am I right? Come on. Boy, is that a misnomer now. Wow. Did I, I didn't even mean to call it. I totally called it. The two it. prosecutors in the case, one of them, we got a letter she wrote to Bill Barr. She, oh, my God. Showing her never Trump credentials. <laughs> and... Re- really? Do you get credentials? Is there a never Trump card? Can... And while I'm asking, can 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 only Republicans get them? Because I would like one. Who doesn't want a never Trump card? That's a great idea. Holy shit. I'm surprised you don't have like a little plastic card you can keep in your wallet, you know, and go, nope. <laughs> they are the ones who during the trial, during the trial, consistently insisted. So during the trial. I was acting above the law when they were. Yeah, during the wouldn't trial. Wouldn't let me explain to the jury why I was obeying the law. Well, no, that, because that would be a lie. You can't make a defense that is not backed up by reality. You can't just fabricate one. And since Trump had not uh, decided you were worth executive privilege, um, you can't claim executive privilege on your own. Shut the fuck up and go to jail. I get convicted. Then it goes to the jury. Did I? Mm-hmm. Mention the jury. Look. Yeah, a bunch of Democrats. You could tell because they were like black. I mean, look at this place. I love anybody who serves on a jury. Okay. It, well, give or take twelve people. I do not criticize the jury. My, mm, feel like you're about to itself as individuals. But would you, as a as a Republican? And a uh, member of the Trump administration want to sit before 12 people that are clearly brown. Drawn from a voter registration pool in which 95%, 95% of the people voted for Joe Biden. Well, and you know what I would do? I would just be very careful about where I was criming. <laughs> That's astonishing. Yeah. Now, valuable lesson learned. Only commit crimes within the vent, uh, the nearby vicinity of uh, Sarah Huckabee Sanders. You'll be fine. So I get in front of that Hi. jury. Oh, the judge is already me. stripped me of the defenses. And I'm facing that. He, wait a minute. He stripped you of your defenses? He what? Sorry. The de- he stripped you of your defenses? In front of that jury, the judge had already stripped me of the defenses. Oh, the defenses. I see. So Mike Pence was going to help you? You had a defense. And I'm facing that jury. And by the way, the judge who stripped me of the defenses, fact checked me on this. Before he got appointed to the bench by Barack Obama, mm-hmm. he was what's called a bundler. You know what a bundler is? 
Yeah, it's a person, if you send him out for firewood, he comes back with more than one stick. He right. bundled checks to give to the campaign of candidate Obama. Uh-huh. And the people of the district where 95 people, uh, 95% of the people vote Democrat like him? Weird. And coincidentally, he winds up on the bench. And the Supreme Court wouldn't help you, even though Trump, you know what the Supreme Court probably said. They probably went, why didn't he just exert exec- executive privilege on your behalf? Bye. Democrat, 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 Democrat. The final. Wait a minute. The third one was the jury. And you can't convince me that they're Democrats just because they come from 95%. What if the 5% that show up are only the like Republicans who believe in, you know, I don't know, American apple pie and flags and shit? The issue is I go to the appeals court. The appeals court to get simple. And nobody expects you to appeal to anyone. Ending my appeal, which is the normal course. And it was given a. Nothing is normal about this dumb fuck. It, normally, the president would just give you executive privilege. I don't know how many times I have to say that. Immediately to Stephen Bannon. Asshole. No, no. Thank you, Loretta Smith. Um. No, no. No, they, they, the judge fights me on that. But the appeals court, think about this. Wait, did you just wrestle or something? or? Mr. Woodward files that appeal. It comes into three judges. Two of them are Republicans. Wait, was Bernstein there? Because I love it when they work together. Republican, one is a Democrat. Mm-hmm. We've got your appeal. Time passes. A short <laughs> we didn't find it appealing. Short period of time, we get this ruling back. Appeal denied. Three Obama judges on the three panels. Three. How did that bait and switch happen? That's supposed to be a random draw. You know what the odds of that are? Less than twenty percent. And it just, I guess it's just your luck, Pete. I mean, think of it this way. Of all the presidents you could have worked in the White House for, you end up working in the White House of the one president who will throw you to the wolves. Ain't this a bitch. Democrat, Democrat, Democrat. (laughs) Democrat, Democrat, everywhere you look. It's like, it's like Donald Trump's presidency made everybody a Democrat. Jesus, the only people that are still Republicans are people who pick up the landline when they do polls. I don't know what the fuck's going on. From start to finish, this is the partisan weaponization of our judicial system. Please write these big stories. Now, the last... Yeah, those aren't... I got to say, the big story is Trump just said fuck off. The thing I want to say is that... Does anybody have, I don't smoke, but does anyone have a pack of cigarettes? Or nine? That's prison. And this is the last thing I'm going to get that even count. This is my conjugal visit. So where are you guys going? That's where they take your freedom. But as hard as... No, they don't. No, they don't. I, I got news for you, fuckwad. They don't take your freedom there. They pause it for a while. You lost your freedom because of what you did. That's the place that carries it out. The the loss of freedom is based on your actions, not on the fucking building. It will be on me and as hard as it will be on anybody who is in there. Well, oh, you're threatening them now? It's harder on their... Because I am packing some sausage and I get lonely, let me tell you. The kind of lonely that scares Steve Bannon. And he doesn't even wake up when it happens. Uh, Democrat, Democrat, Democrat. Families. And this is who those Democrats have hurt. What? Yeah, yeah. Democrats are the party of putting too many people in jail. Jesus Christ, make up your mind. I thought we were letting them all out. Isn't that the problem? This is who the Democrats have hurt. No, no, but do. Hold on. One second, I have to pretend to give a shit. And uh, and, uh, the Democrats. uh, Wow, the Democrats. I will walk proudly in, in there and do my time. Oh, yeah, he's going to do his time, and it's so 
somebody's going to do him while he's doing his job. I hope you're happy now. I hope you're happy. Okay. But what they do, the people, uh, and uh -huh. by the way, fact uh, by the way, I would not gesture with these two fingers. It's very provocative. It might not get you what it was. Check this. Check yourself before you wreck yourself, man. I will be the only person in there that's under 200 pounds. Only person in that prison. Uh huh. Who's been convicted of a misdemeanor. A misdemeanor. So you get you're not gonna be in there for a long time then. So so I don't understand. I, I, I mean I, I bet a bunch of them have misdemeanors too. Maybe you guys could like form a club. Everybody else is in there for felonies. Mm, mm, mm. Um. By the way, no. This, there's literally a no fucking way he knows that. And no fucking way that's true. I By the way, yes, if you say Democrat, Democrat, Democrat uh, into your uh, cell mirror, I will show up behind you. I will gather strength from this. Mm hmm. <laughs> your Hulk, your Hulk like powers or your overwhelming love for Donald John Trump? Nah, that can't be it. Something else entirely, I'm guessing. Donald John Trump is the nominee. Thank you, Gregory Brown, for the super chat. For the Republican presidential campaign. While I'm away for the next four months. He might be joining you. My book, my new book, it's called. Oh, fuck you. You, you want to see the part I'm skipping? This part. Oh, sorry. Ha, 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 ha. I'm your new salvate, asshole. Sorry, I just clicked the wrong button. That happens. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Skip. Platform, the unofficial guidebook to the Trump. Uh, winning, uh, winning strategies in here. You go to New MAGA Book and National Convention America. What MAGA principles? This is in the first hundred days of the new Trump administration. To <laughs> um, of what? Uh, West Palm Beach City Council. Make us more prosperous, and safer, and secure. To well, I got to tell you something, man. Um, jail, uh, the, uh, if you listen to Donald Trump, our big cities are so fucking dangerous. You're probably safer in jail. Deal with that Southern border to deal with China, Russia, Iran, and North Korea. That he's trying, but they, I guess he doesn't have anything they want anymore. Newmagadeal.com. That will be. Oh, fuck off. New Maga deal. Oh, that's right. That's the name. That's saying that Donald Trump and his. Is a dickhead. Followers and supporters are extremists. This was the man. This was the man. Make no mistake about this. For four years, four years, peace. If you don't count Syria and the fact that Russia was still making attacks in uh, the Donbass and, the, um, and we were still in Afghanistan the entire time. And of course, there were ISIS attacks all over the fucking place. And uh, Hamas fired rockets uh, almost every single day of his presidency into Israel. The Iron Dome, st Dome stopped a good portion of them, but you can pretty much just uh, Google any time during the Trump presidency, and, you know, and go just the word bombing and then see how we were involved in stuff. Bullshit. Prosperity. Yeah, until he, you know, ran out of a uh, landing, uh, landing strip from the from the Obama Biden economy and had to start implementing his own shit where he blew a six trillion dollar hole in the fucking uh, deficit even before COVID showed up and then he screwed the pooch on that. Security. Um, well, COVID helped a lot again, and obviously the the wall made it worse. Price stability. Price stability. You, you do realize oil went to negative $35 a barrel. What do we have? And he, and he fought to uh, Saudi Arabia and Russia to get them to stop lowering the price in a game of chicken even before. We have now inflation, an out-of-control southern border. 
No, neither of those things, actually. War clouds growing in the Taiwan Strait. <laughs> Since when? In Gaza. G- growing? I think they're almost on their way out. In Ukraine. That- yeah, yeah, you mean the, the, the country the Republicans are denying support to? That's Joe Biden. NewMaggotDeal.com. All right, I'm going to stop there. I'll take a... I'll take a few questions. Really long answers and questions. Preferably, I would like to hear some really long questions that maybe even go till dawn. Uh, I've got a... Uh, few questions. Do you wish... And I, uh, I'm going to make my journey across the street. Do you, I'll start with you, ma'am. Thank you. Do you wish you had shown up for testimony and asserted privilege in person? I mean, you're talking about that now. You're arguing... Yeah, you could have solved that shit with one thing. We're doing that now, but should you have shown up to Congress to make that argument? My mission, my mission is to... Was to bullshit my way through it, and I thought Trump would protect me, but I'm stupid. Defend the constitutional separation of powers and executive privilege. And I knew from day one of getting that subpoena, based on my experiences in the White House, from reading the Office of Legal Counsel memos... That, that if I said anything that I, if I repeated anything I'd said to the president or he said to me, we'd both be under the jail. So no. The department of- Four months ain't shit considering the crimes we've committed. Just for the record. The justice that absolute testimonial immunity was in, in, in place. McGann, Dearborn, Conway, Porter, I can give you a whole long string of senior White House advisors. Uh Uh-huh. But the one person who did exactly what I did and were never prosecuted. Yeah, but they specifically either got a letter or or were lawyers, so they had attorney-client privilege, essentially, with their discussions that go beyond executive privilege anyways. You're talking about White House lawyers. White House lawyers have even more protection because they, they you, that would be, if you want to talk about automatic, um, you know, uh, veil of secrecy, they're the ones that fucking have it. And if I had gone to Congress and played the piecemeal game with them, I would have done damage to the separation of powers and I would not have been. No, you wouldn't have. No, you wouldn't have. You could have showed up and said, I believe this is a farce and I cannot in good conscience uh, you know, relay stuff that I told to the president. I plead the fifth about anything that I may have been engaged in that you guys are going on a fishing expedition. You can't get me and you can't get him. Fuck you. Here I am, though. I plead the fifth. Of. That would have been it. And I believe I have executive privilege and the president shouldn't even have to do it because these were high-level discussions. But you didn't, did you? you? You pulled a fucking bluff and they called it. Doing my duty, I would not have been obeying my oath of office. Next question. Yes, yes sir. You're about to be doing your duty in a silver pan. Um, are you nervous? And have you spoken to Donald Trump? I am not nervous. I, I'm not talking about, I'm going to claim executive privilege on, on the Donald Trump conversation. That's a no. Since I've had the greatest amount of support from Donald Trump. Except for that whole. And his team. And, yeah. and uh, he, If you had the greatest, if you had the greatest amount of support, wouldn't you not be going to jail right now? He, uh, he uh, could have made one fucking phone call. He under look. They can put me in prison. Yeah, yeah. They, they, hey, asshole. They did. Whoops. Wake up. My button's got all screwy for asshole. a Asshole. Right there, you go. That's what it was. They can put you in prison. Make no mistake about that. Well, yeah. If I am subpoenaed to Congress and I don't show up and I fight it without cause, and I believe I have executive privilege, but no one exerts it on my behalf? Probably. And make no mistake about this. You can't make the case that they're making us, you know, they're fucking with you in particular because Trump, and then say it could happen to anybody. That's not your sales pitch, asshole. Your sales pitch is, it only happens to us. It's not going to happen to you. I know what, see, like, I I don't want to give these assholes any ideas, but he's going straight to jail, so we won't be able to hear this. I don't know that he has 
computer privileges. I think you have to earn them. So he probably won't see this for a while if he does it all. But uh, I got news for you, asshole. Um, this is, uh, you know, well, you guys saw it. Hold on. They can put you in prison. Yeah. Your sales pitch is, I'm going to jail for this. You wouldn't. They're not going to do this to you or you or you. They're not going to do this to other Democrats. They're not going to do this to re the reporters like you. They're going to only do this just to the Trump squad. They're not even going to do it to the average American. They're going after this administration because they're afraid of us and blah, 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 blah. That's your language. If you go, they could do this to you, You're it's the if they could do it to them too, that means they could do it to everybody who commits a crime, dummy. That's how the justice system should work. Make no mistake. At this point, like, they could, they could jail anybody for murder. About that. And make no mistake about this. I'm, I'm not, I haven't made many mistakes tonight. I've had a couple of buttons misfire, but, I mean, I wouldn't call that a mistake. It's just, you know, part and parcel of the situation I'm in. But, I'm, yeah, I'm seeing, by the way, uh, chat, you guys are doing fucking great. I haven't seen any real um, problems for, with you guys either. Look at it. You're just lovely. They are coming after Donald Trump with the same tactics, tools, and strategies. No, they, they have different ones for him because he, he was the president, so he can exert executive privilege on himself. He's Nobody is just, is hanging him out to dry, except maybe his, his lawyers that quit. They used to put me over there today. Well, here's hoping. <laughs> I don't know. What, I don't know. Wait, wait, wait. Why are you... Uh, you're trying to bum me out because that's great. If they're coming after him with the same shit they went after you for, and you're going to jail today, I don't know. Things are looking up. Possibilities there. It's going to be all right. The sun is shining. Everybody's happy now. He's going to jail soon, too. All right. Okay. Think about this. All right. I'm thinking about it. <clears throat> Sorry. I can't think about it without giggling. Stripped of all defenses before a jury trial that's what you think you've been stripped all right it's gonna happen to him well no actually he's getting way more chances than he should democrats in all the jurisdictions he's in fanny willis in atlanta funny the guy uh, in yeah the guy over the thing with the thing in in manhattan yeah, that guy. I remember him. Ah, oh, I hate that guy. The guy in Manhattan. Ah, oh, fuck him. What was his name? The Woody Allen? Uh, Bragg. And, and then, of course, Jack Smith at the apartment. Oh, of course. Well, that Jack Smith. Obviously, there's a lot of Jack Smiths out there. Um, um, if, if, uh, if, if the sign-in rolls at motor lodges are any indication. Of injustice, as we like to call it on my side of the fence. So uh, uh, hey, asshole, your side of the fence is prison. Everybody talks like that. Everybody's innocent. You're going to love it. So, um, Every, everybody's innocent where you're going, man. I'm pissed. <laughs> yeah. I'd pee before I got, I went in there. I really would. I'd just go between two cars. What are they going to do? <laughs> Lock you up? That's what I'm feeling right now, but I'm also afraid of only one thing. I'm afraid. Mm-hmm. I, uh, uh, could it... Moon River. It, what, what could it be? Drop your shorts and bend over, Mr. Babar. Does anybody have any idea what, uh, he might be afraid of? Moon River. Afraid for this country. Oh, I see. Well, we're all right. We'll be fine. We're, uh, well, first of all, for the next four months, we're not in jail. I, I will say because that. Because this, what they're doing, should have a chilling effect on every American, regardless of their party. If they come for me, they can come for you. No. And again, this is a stupid defense. What you have to say, if you're in this asshole's shoes, which aren't going to be his shoes, they'll be state-issued in a little bit, but uh, if you're if you're in his situation... And if you are, I, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The argument you need to make is not, this could happen to anybody. If they, they could do this to me, they could do it to anybody. No. What you want to say is, they're not doing this to everybody. You don't have anything to be afraid of. They're just doing this to people in Donald Trump's cabinet because they're trying to fuck with us to keep us from making America great again. They're not going to throw everybody else in jail. 
They're not going to just randomly do this. This isn't that kind of thing. And that case, I don't want to help these assholes out, but that's a way better argument than, if they got me, they could get you. Well, yeah, only if I fucking engaged in a scheme to defraud half the voters in the fucking country and 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 created a, a list of fake electors and bust them to fucking D.C. and look the other way while a gallows was being built and helped craft the statements and arrangement of a uh, of a, you know, like a meeting on the lawn before these assholes stormed the fucking Capitol where people fucking died. And then I, and then when they wanted to ask me about it, in the lead up to that thing where fucking people died, and I was like, fuck you, I have executive privilege. And the president who I was defending was like, no, you don't. Um, yeah, I would, then it could happen to me. Yeah. Yeah. Except it wouldn't. You know why? Because I could have just gone down to the fucking Congress and gone, I'm protecting this entire, uh, you know, the, the, the executive branch entirely. Um, there are elements of this that I, I, you know, if I speak on them, it will be violating my Fifth Amendment rights. So I cannot speak to those kind of things. And I believe there are things that will violate executive privilege, even if the president doesn't exert it on my behalf. I believe these conversations have to be secret. secret and I also think they could... Uh, incriminate myself and others. Um, and people go, does that include the president? And you, you'd go, no. And then uh, you'd go, so uh, put me in jail overnight, but I'm not going to um, acquiesce to this. And if you try to get me to, I'm just going to plead the fifth because I have that right. Right? And then he'd go, he'd go, fuck, and i just leave. What else you got? I'll take two more. Yes, ma'am. Two more. Yes, ma'am. Poquito. Oh, you, you can add. Now, I can't speak to the camera, though. Yeah, yeah. Can, let me ask you about, can I ask you about your prison? Can you make a statement for Truth Social in Spanish to get people to vote for Donald Trump right before you go to jail? Consultant. Right, Sarah, anybody else? Yeah. Yes, uh, look. <clears throat> Wait, hold on. I didn't hear. Hold on. I didn't hear. Now I can't speak to the camera though. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Can, let me ask you about. Can I ask you about your prison consultant? Can I ask you about your prison consultant? Yes, that movie with uh, Will Ferrell. Six committee be jailed for their suppression of evidence. Okay, so the Jan Six committee be jailed for their suppression of evidence. Uh, excuse me, dum dum. That ga- that that sounds like the voice of the lady from RAB. Um, and I'm sure it is. Um, guess what, dum dum? It is the release of that evidence that they did not suppress, but they held back a bunch of it just because of the volume of it and for a myriad of other reasons. That as the Republicans release it, all that happens is more maggots go to jail. Uh, look, <clears throat> Jason. Just say yes and go to jail. What do you go? What do you got to lose? Six um, committee. Um, mm, tread did lightly. not investigate, in my judgment the most important aspects of how that riot occurred. Really? Um, I wrote in my book, In Trump Time, the chapter about J6, that the last... Uh-huh, and, and obviously you wrote that under oath. The last three people on God's good earth who wanted violence that day on Capitol Hill were Stephen K. Bannon, President Trump himself, uh, and me. And the re- uh, bullshit. I gotta tell you, I don't know about Bannon. I, I doubt it. I fucking seriously doubt it. I actually, it, it, it would not surprise me that this asshole, because he thought that you know Green Bay Sweep was going to work. So he thought this would fuck with his plan. But Steve Bannon didn't mind, and Trump fucking loved it. The reason is that the fact that that violence occurred deprived this country of having a review under right they, it fucked up the 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 green bay sweep this was one of the conspiracy theories we hear from uh the, from maggots is like we, the violence is the very thing like well all you guys had to do was not charge up the fucking steps then the perfectly legal 1887 electoral count bullshit count act of the, of the votes okay no because the vice president had already said he didn't have the power there was no secondary part of that. The Green Bay sweep wasn't going to fucking happen. What I think needs to happen, and I hope the Republicans, are you listening louder, Matt? Are you listening, folks up there? 
Louder milk, I think, is who we meant. Jordan, my brothers, who I uh, used to ride with on Air Force One. Uh, <laughs> Boy, are those days gone. Uh, you need to remember that that J6 committee has some unfinished business. Oh boy, do they. Yeah, and and, and if the how if the Republicans lose the fucking house, you're going to hear all about it. There were more FBI informants up on Capitol Hill that day, possibly instigating that crowd, than the FBI itself could keep track of. There were stories. Bullshit. Fuck you. And also, informants were Maggots who were there, who were charging up the fucking steps, and they're like, holy shit, these people are beating cops. They had a moment where they were like, oh my god, this is wrong. Lots of people did that. A thousand plus were attacking people, destroying property, and all that. More than them. But there were at least, I don't know, 75 of them who were like, this is not what I signed up for. And they called the cops. And they talked to the FBI. And then the FBI informants that they always talk about being there on the day that is supposedly all they had to do was whisper in a maggot's ear and th- and they'll attack a cop. What the fuck kind of... You want to talk about a Manchurian candidate? Jesus Christ. But the the vast majority of the FBI informants are the people who said, Oh yeah, I know that guy. He's my fucking neighbor. That's my... Or that's my wife's my new, you know, friend from church. He's a fucking lunatic. That's who they are. What is about that? Um, why did Nancy Pelosi... I love how this guy's like, man, I'm done. I gotta pack this. Shit not up. Provide- I need to get over here so I can get a shot of him going to jail. And more Capitol Hill police. Why did Mark Esper, the Secretary of Defense, have the National Guard so far away? Because there was no emergency until there was an emergency. And also, they had written up this thing where they couldn't be armed. They couldn't even have shields. They couldn't wear riot gear. They'd basically just be postal workers standing the fuck around. Also, it was a little nervy, I gotta say, if I was a Democrat on that day and I heard that Donald John Trump had a select group of National Guard from states that had sued other states simply for not voting for Trump, that they had showed up. They weren't the locals. They weren't Maryland or Virginia National Guard. They were fucking Texas and Arkansas and fucking Wyoming and Montana and And shit like that. uh, Those fuckers, Alabama, Louisiana, a bunch of National Guard guys who just magically are all standing there. I got to say, those are the kind of guys who are waiting for Donald Trump to to yell sick them. And as for the destruction of evidence, sir, look, the things they are doing. They have all of it. Anybody who wasn't germane to their investigation they erased their video of their interviews because it's nobody's fucking business. There doesn't need to be footage of these people floating around for the rest of their lives. That's rules of evidence 101. But they kept the transcripts. Hillary Clinton, like, (laughs) cleansing her, I mean, there's so many things. Cleansing her emails? Oh, you mean the thing where she destroyed the devices after she stopped working at the State Department? In, in, a, in a protocol that would guarantee that no information on them would ever be found by a foreign power, unlike the fucking cardboard boxes in the shitter at Mar-a-Lago. These Democrats have been- yeah, it, it, Asshole, you know it would have solved this? They'd have bleach-bit Mar-a-Lago. That would actually justify... Trump tried to get them to flood the fucking server room at Mar-a-Lago so, just so that he could uh, hide footage, for fuck's sake. Hold on here. Um, yeah, here you go. What happened to the server? Where is the server? And what yeah, it's good. is the server saying? Servers don't speak unless they're saying, uh, you guys uh, want a dessert menu or would you just like to check? Where is the server? Well, the server was in the basement at Mar-a-Lago and your pool guy tried to flood the room to to erase the video of your of your handlers and your helpers fucking shuffling boxes around. Where is the server? Mm-hmm. I really do want to see the server. Uh-huh. And you want to see it destroyed. Prison, you juxtapose that with me. All I've done is my duty. All I have done is my duty to this country, the Constitution, my commander-in-chief. Then don't fight it. I'm dead serious. Don't fucking fight it. 
that's how you like the, the problem he has is that if he's if, if anywhere if he was actually put under oath he would have to lie on you know because he saw other crimes committed he's a material witness to it you can't plead the fifth on that shit you can only plead the fifth on shit you did or participated in if you're a witness to it or you become a material witness you can't keep your fucking mouth shut you're going to jail that's what this is he was a material witness to the crimes that he wasn't a participant in and and you know the the crimes he actually committed he could plead the fifth on but he absolutely could have walked into to the jan 6 committee and said i believe this is covered under the you know executive privilege i think this is a violation of the separation of powers i think it's a fundamentally violates my rights i plead the fifth on anything that might um you know you guys might try to twist into making it a crime because i was fighting for this country and blah 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 but i'm you know i'm here and i'll just stand here but i showed up like how hard is that and to my oath of office sorry one more a pardon either for President no, Joe Biden or Trump no. if he becomes this, president. This yes. is going to the Supreme Court. My mission. My mm, yeah, but after they tell you to go fuck yourself, then would you be interested in a pardon? I'm just saying, around month number three. Mission in this. And I will have served my time by the time that mission is completed. Yeah, but you could go back. Just to get this in front of the Supreme Court. Right, and then they'll say no, and then you'll be called back um, for an investigation after the Democrats take the House this fall, and then you'll violate that again, and then you'll go to jail for two years, I guess. And I hope that they will put politics aside and look at... No, you don't. You don't want them to put politics aside. What the fuck do you think Trump leaned the court the direction he did? You think he put all that effort into throwing Amy Coney Barrett and, Ke- and Brett Kavanaugh and these motherfuckers on there so that they could... Be balanced and fair, you nuts. You should pray that they put f- politics front and center because on the on the merits of the law, you're fucked. This is what they call a case. This is important. This is what they call the case of first impressions. Okay. I I gotta I gotta say I, my first impression of you was just that you were weird. There are so many novel legal issues in this case. That look, you don't get credit for committing new crimes. Can you imagine what the first hacker felt like? Oh my god. I'm literally the first person to ever break into a computer. <laughs> oh fuck. Well, that was cool while it lasted. Do I get to be in the Guinness book? Shit. Require the settlement again, another legal term of good law on the subject. Settling good law. Oh, yeah, asshole, they're going to write good law on you. And one of them is going to be that if the president does not exert, specifically exert executive privilege, this is another situation. Your case codifies that in law. Congratulations. You are a part of case law now, dum-dum, because you're, you're the distinction. This is the Navarro principle. Congratulations. If the president doesn't actually say the words, I'm exerting executive privilege, then He's not, and you have to testify. It's it's crying. Shut up and go to jail. Now for... Go to jail, dum-dum. ...the Supreme Court to do this. But the tragedy here is... Be- and another thing is, if I could, hand me that guitar. Um, I just want to do a short set, if I could. Because I have not been released pending appeal, I will have already done my time... Yeah, but if you're in there and you, you know, they find you, you know, smuggling, uh, you know, fentanyl lollipops in your bum, like, you know, like uh, Jackson paid you to, uh, you know, I, it, they could, it could stack. I'm just saying. Before that is done, but that's the price of living in Joe Biden's America, right? No, it's really not. I mean, dude, this is just you. Now, uh, God bless you all. I'll see you on the other side. Break on through to the other. I'm not going to break out. We're waiting for you. We're fighting for you to stay in jail. Navarro became the first person from the Trump administration to go to prison over January 6th. And all it would have taken is Donald Trump may want to talk about. I'm pissed. <laughs> it's a good clip. That's what I'm feeling right now, but I'm also a fr- well, wait till you, you have no idea what you're going to be feeling later. Moon River. Afraid of only one thing. I'm a.
Yes, you are. Drop your shorts and bend over, Mr. Pray for this country. The ball is going to prison today. Um, Peter. Yeah. Uh, is there? This is a. There's a fucking playlist. Let me show you something. This is pretty hilarious. Let me show you something. This is how you know. Congratulations, Peter Navarro. You've made history. Look at all these. Like, I, there's a bunch. Of, like, I don't even remember this many videos about like when Bannon was going to jail initially, and he got out. Right. That's just the start. That's just on this page. Jesus. Go away. Um, not you, chat room. You guys, you, I love. Hi, chat room. You guys, oh, God. Um, not not the bicycle mic. Don't yell that at a man going to jail. It's just not right. Um, um, he is guilty, according to Diane Russell. Guilty of being dumb. Yep. Uh, wow, look at the price of gas coming down. Right. Uh, he, charges, he just pissed himself. I don't doubt it. Go now. <laughs> Are you traumatized? I'm sorry, Myra Little. Apologies. Um, oh, that's sweet. Thank you, White Flower. I love you guys, too. It's great. <laughs> Missed his first commissary. Yeah, I missed uh, the first meal of the day. I don't doubt it. Um, it's Jesus, six thirty already. I, I fucking that was just long. Um, all right, this is yeah. Let me do a couple of real quick ones, if I may. And I went really long last night. I want to keep everybody. Um, okay, I'm only gonna do a part of this, but I have to show you this. I this next one, <laughs> I can't even do the whole fucking. I don't have time. Um, this is a Blaze TV show that I. Do not fucking understand. Um, I, I, I call it uh, like, m like Madame and the Pool Boy. This lady is kind of like a cross between Carol Roth, who is mad at the show, and um, our uh, dear friend Kimberly Gilfoyle. Dad, these are my friends. Oh, what? Okay. Now, Joe and Hunter sold out America, but what will Republicans do? Nothing. They're fucking lame, I bet. Anyways, this, uh, I only know the cast of the show, so check this out. So what are you guys going to do about it? Because we keep hearing to... all of these, you know, they're like, oh, you got the latest smoking gun. And I'm like, okay, well, I feel like a smoking gun usually results in some sort of conviction or, you know, something happening. Ding, ding, ding. What do we have for Johnny? But so yesterday. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, yesterday. Also, no smoking gun. Um, there have been new emails that have been that have revealed Henry Zhao. This is the Chinese CCP linked businessman who partnered with mm -hmm. Hunter Biden's. And Tony Bobolinsky was actually closer to Tony Bobolinsky and Devin Archer was closer to Tony Bobolinsky. They had a better working relationship. But anyways, he, that's why he had three votes instead of just one in the organization. A uh, firm. Turns out you're going to be shocked to hear this, Yaku. Uh, Zhao. Yaku? Please tell me she cuts to a puppet. <laughs> like, isn't that right? <laughs> like, she cuts to like, isn't that right, uh, Yaku? And then, <laughs> like, the, the camera flips over and it's like, <laughs> I am, yes, that's exactly right. That right thing you say is amazing. Was motivated by access. Not f oh my God! They were both the uh, crimes of motivation. Financials. No. Yeah. Yeah. So what? So access wasn't the thing. They just wanted motivation. So corroborating, of course, the House Oversight Committee's position that the Biden name was a. Oh wait, that's just the news. That's the same place that has the document that proves the phone call from Dubai wasn't shit. Commodity being sold by Hunter. Uh, there was- Or that they were being sold by Bobolinsky. Yeah. <laughs> is... You always know it's gonna be an interesting time when you have- You do always. It's, it's a great show. Have um, uh, someone from prison testifying, but- they... Yes, that was the, the star witness for the Republicans. He was in jail. Uh, it, they literally had a camera and a sewer pipe and he was crawling through shit like the Shawshank Redemption. Except he was crawling into prison. I, I think it's weird. His crimes were so bad 
that that's how they decided, you know, probably. I mean, I have no problem with it, but whatever. There was a uh, one of the witnesses, Jason Galanis, one of Hunter's business partners at uh, the Burnham firm. Well, also, he was Tony Bobulinski's business partner. And also, he was Devin Archer's business partner. And he defrauded Indian tribes out of their money after Hunter kicked him to the curb. From inside federal prison, told Congress. Well, yeah, you don't think. This is Congress. You're not going to call some dude who's just locally in jail. Congress, during testimony, the entire value add of Hunter Biden to our business was his family name and his access to his father, Vice President Joe Biden. And Right. And what did that get you? Jail. Let me get this straight. You got into business with this guy because you wanted his father to pull levers for you and help you out. And how did that work out? Because uh, you're in fucking jail right now. And so there were emails that show that uh -huh. Henry Zhao was interested in the game-changing value Joe Biden would bring to him post-vice presidency. Which right. The game that changed would be that he's no longer got material influence and just would be known as a good guy. You, you, you are incredibly stupid, but I enjoy your, your weird hellish blouse. Is that from the M Melania Trump Christmas tree collection? Which would provide political access, not just in the U.S. and around the world, which is not really what you want, I would say, when you're dealing with someone who's linked to the CCP. You don't really want them having political access inside the United States, but it would explain a lot about what's going on right now. So what's going on right now? What? Seriously, what's happening? Oh, in these emails. Oh, you mean like China getting like on the verge of collapse and having no access to American technology the way they did during the Trump administration? You mean like the CHIPS Act, which Donald Trump could have signed at any fucking time while he was in office, but he just fucking didn't? We don't know why. He said, let him know that what we discussed during our last lunch together in Beijing still holds true. Rosemont Seneca will be folded into the Burnham Harvest entity as soon as the deal closes, thereby giving us all the solid, well-regarded global platform from which we can conduct our mutual business. Yes, it's, it's terrible the, the salty language these gang m members use. You know, the mafia, they're always F-bombing. So impeachment inquiry investigators have uh, mm -hmm. considerable evidence from these emails, among other uh, of what things that Joe Biden met. It's just that Joe Biden met with nearly all of Hunter's foreign clients and they traced payments uh, of business, of business agreements. You get, make up your mind because it really does matter in close proximity to these meetings. But it's just but listen, he was just talking about the weather. Yep. He was just talking about the weather. That's all. That's right. And China has done so well under Joe Biden. Obviously, something is funky. Of course, of course. Two, one for Oh, my God. Who is this guy? This is the guy. Uh, th this is magic. Can I just say, I don't know why she hired the pool boy and, uh, and, and kind of, you know, combed his hair and put him on a mic. But we'll find out. Race and in another word, really just kind of... It's Jocko Buyans, Blaze TV contributor. Well, I, of course he's contributing. He's got one of those uh, frosty mics. I'm just irked with it a little bit. Oh, irked. Yeah, yeah. Who doesn't get irked? Okay. Uh, Sarah. Why? The, the, oh, it's, why, why, Sarah? Yeah, why would you be irked? The phrase, you know, comes to mind, quid pro quo. Mm. Right. Yes, it does. You're right. It is a phrase. Uh, yeah, and, and you know what you really need in the quid pro part is the quo. Like we had uh, in Trump's attempt to get Zelensky to do a press conference about a, a uh, you know, the, you know, an investigation into the Bidens in exchange for weapons, which he ran out the clock on and got fucked. But that's what he was asking for. Mm. <gasps> that's a that's a bad. I seem that's to a think bad that term. Got another guy in potential mm -hmm. hot water. Just that's a little a bit. That's a naughty thing. I'm told. It's, it's not. This is um. It, it, she's been taking classes from uh, Glenn. Or is this just like the Blaze accent? Does everybody just have like shitty sarcasm accent there? So good, right? Mm. 
No. That's or, impeachable. Or, or say pay for play. Some mm-hmm. people, I mean, I, I want to think that... Pay, pay for play is different than quid pro quo. I mean, technically there's... The quid would be literally like quid, you know, money, dollars, greenbacks, dead presidents, deceased pieces of paper with deceased notables on them, yes. Another guy... Um, was impeached twice, mm. yeah. which I would one, say one time for this very thing. I think you know. quid pro quo yeah. hit the nail on the head. Mm. Pay for play, I like, is a problem. That's not even what Trump was doing. Yeah. We were just told it was the quid pro quo, which was this benign this pay phrase for play. that we and were then told the other, was bad. And any other, the other word that really just my tongue's burning is that word. Yes, uh, it, it might be whatever was in the cup. Treason. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. so I think both of those so relevant. Yeah, let's just be real. The, the, the thought... Tre- treason? What do you mean? Tre- it's treasonous to meet with Tony Bobolinsky and his business partners. So why is Tony Bobolinsky not committing treason? He wanted the deal to be bigger, go further. He wanted to be involved in the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative. That's what... The, this was his ticket. This was... That's why he's pissed. Tony Bobolinsky thought he had an in with the Chinese to be involved in these giant infrastructure projects they were doing all over the fucking world. And the Bidens went, wait a minute, this is hanky as shit. Fuck you. And they left. They dropped, they, they dropped it. They dissolved the company and didn't work with them anymore. And he had to go back with his dick in his hand to the Chinese and couldn't get any more work from him. And he's mad. That all of America, inc- including Jill Biden, I'll just go straight into the what the bedroom there, right? The, the thought that all of America did not know what was really going on here is a joke. Well, then explain it to us, Jack off Smirnoff. We've known this from day one. Well, if we've known it from day one, again, why is it so hard to impeach the guy? This is pay for play. Okay, what did they get in return? You get the little druggie, you slip him cocaine, you, you get his vices with prostitutes, and mind you, underage girls... No, not proven. No, not mind you, underage girls. No. Underage? Right. No. Rudy Giuliani said the girls looked young to him. And he tried to go to, the, like, Maryland police with it, and he alleged he went. I don't believe he went because it never went anywhere. But also, Rudy Giuliani is also the guy who tried to get a, a girl he thought was 15 years old to stick her hand down his fucking pants. Right. Mm. And t- you get to his daddy. And... And then you get what? You don't just get to his daddy. You get to the White House. You get to... No, you don't. In 2017, you don't. the executive branch. No, you don't. Especially when he's not in office anymore. You get to America. And so... Uh, Apparently not. All these people have either fled the country or or, or are being... were investigated and jailed in China for corruption, which if if you need a translator... The reason they're being investigated for corruption and jailed is because they're being disappeared to either change their uh, identity and go do other shit in another part of the world, or they're just killed because they were trying to slice off enough for themselves so they could escape China. They bought access. And what'd they get in, in exchange? And, and both of them, bo- both of the Bidens, heck, all of the Bidens. All of the- yeah, Shemp Biden, uh, Goldie Biden. Um, uh, uh, McCracken Biden is the half Scottish guy. The Bidens are implicated here because it was. Ooh, implicated, not implicated. You can't just implicate someone by saying that they're implicated. That's that. That's too easy. It's just a loan to my brother. My brother's repaying a loan from money he got from an American company. You know, and so I want to see all of them, all of them lined up, right? Huh? orange jumpsuits, and then you get the darkest cell. What the fuck? What for? You know solitary. But the kind of solitary, the solitary that comes with one meal in 30 days, Mm. kind of solitary. What the fuck? Hold on. When when did we get, like, Lula's business partner in here working at the goddamn... I I don't even say that shit about Trump. What the fuck kind of, like, pro-Guantanamo jack-off is this? So th- this is this is how- it's like she's getting creeped out like Jesus Christ. There is no way this guy doesn't go to jail in the next five years for something hinky and fucked up. How gross it gets. OK, so Galanis actually um, 
in his testimony, he quote, why is Galanis why is, why is, why is, why is going to jail? Why is he in jail? Why, did he, why, is he been, why is he in jail? Does anybody know? Does anybody know why he's in jail? I can't remember why he's in jail. But there's, this was a draft email. Uh, they ended up changing it. But the draft email that was uh-huh. written by Devin Archer, of course, yeah. Hunter's yeah. ex-BFF. Yes. He wrote this for Hunter. Yeah, heavy on the ex. Hunter that said in the email, please also remind Henry Zhao of our conversation about a board seat for a certain relation of mine. Devin and I golfed with that relation earlier last week. James. And we discussed this very idea again. And as always, he remains very, very keen on the opportunity. Also, yeah, Devin Archer wrote that. And it's fucking weird. They changed it because it wasn't anything Hunter Biden would fucking say. Right? Yes. Boom. Game, set, match. You know the guy who defrauded Indian tribes with uh, Galvanis and who's going to go to fucking jail? That guy did a draft email in the voice of Hunter Biden that Hunter Biden nixed and changed and didn't release in that form and had an argument with him about. Um, and therefore, boom. Huh. I wonder what relation that was. Yeah. This I, it, it was James. But it doesn't fucking matter. Because it was written by Devin Archer and it's fucking weird. Certain relation of his. Uh, I wonder who that was. Could it be the big guy that he already, by the way, Hunter already testified that Joe Biden was the big guy? No, he didn't. Look, there is a lie in that email. No, he didn't. Email. I, I'm sorry. I just got to do this today. The relation is the big guy, but I doubt that he played golf. He maybe was riding <laughs> on the cart. Okay. Yeah, I have I mean, never seen Joe Biden play golf. Arm would have fallen off. Okay. Uh, this guy, like, who the fuck, like, this guy is one of the weirdest fucking people, and he works at the Blaze, he's just on her show, it's super weird, right? I don't even know what the fuck, yeah, I don't even know what the fuck, he's, what his point, other, he just, he just, I mean, if you want to talk about, like, Biden derangement syndrome, this would be a good example of it, good lord. I mean, it's ridiculous, so nobody's getting offended. It's just fucking goofy. Um, uh, the other thing is, is that, you know, first of all, it, it, don't brag about golf ever because Trump, you know, spent more money, like 400 years of presidential salary golfing, golfing. Just Secret Service support staff going with him on golfing trips. 400 years worth of presidential salary at his own fucking properties. Jag off. Anyway, so I just, I just, maybe there'll be more from these folks in the future, maybe not, but this is uh, Madame and the Pool Boy, and they're very weird. Like, I, like the Blaze has some odd shit. Um, now, I guess we can end on this. Well, this is, uh, yeah. Well, let's end on this, because I feel like I have to. Hold on one second. Okay, everybody, get ready. It's very exciting. We're going to OAN. It's one of my favorite places. It's like, oh, yeah. And uh, just one of my favorite uh, makeup artists and wonderful people. And she's fabulous. We're going to about to see her. Okay, here she comes. Look at this. Oh. oh. This is a show called In Focus. FBI reports overall decline in crime with Sheriff Mark Lamb. Obviously, this is a lie. Oh. I wish I could get my like contour on my nose that good. Good Lord. It looks like she she tried to squeeze between two two spray cans uh, in, a, in an auto body shop. Fabulous. Here we go. NBC News is reporting new FBI data confirms previous mm. indications that crime in the U.S. declined significantly. Which is obviously not true. Look behind me. Significantly in 2023. Continuing a post-pandemic pandemic trend and belying widespread perceptions that crime is rising. Which is, you know, obviously, I just want to say good job so far. Your show has been fantastic at making people think the world is on fucking fire. Yet again, we are being gaslit into... Oh, it's terrible. It's terrible. I hate it. They're, ga they're gaslighting us. Submitting into a false narrative. Mm. Real quick, though. What the fuck are you looking at? What are you looking? What are you looking at? Are you are you just on a Zoom call? I don't understand this. 
The fuck are you looking at? So who are you going to believe? The I, I, yes, who are you going to believe? Me, who can look right in the fucking camera? Or you, who, what the fuck are you looking at? Mainstream media that would never lie or deceive you for the interest of the state. That who are you talking to? They serve or yourself. Joining me now to discuss is Sheriff Mark Land, U.S. Ugh, I, I shocked me. He was looking right into the camera. Good Lord. By the way, I, I, I loved Woody Harrelson's portrayal of you in No Country for Old Men. Senate candidate over in Arizona. Sheriff, thank you so much for being back with us. State Senate? Yes, it's great to see you again. It is great to see you again. <laughs> I can't even look you in the eyes, though. It gets so handsome in your big hat, which matches the walls of the business center at the Ramada. Thank you for having me. It's great to see you as well. Thank you. Well, it's... I have a quick question for you. Call it. What's the most you've ever lost on a coin toss? Call it. Because mean means everything. Call it. Call it. Seems to me like this is yet another example of the Mockingbird media being in bed with the intelligence. Mock. Ing. Yeah. Ing. Yeah. Bird. Yeah. Mockingbird. Everybody have you. She's gonna buy me a market. This community what? and just parroting uh, what they report without actually looking into the details. But it. Yeah, and you've looked into the details. All you gotta do is look over your shoulder and, and see that traffic is backed up, I gotta say. It, is, it hasn't moved in, well, forever. Is it possible, Sheriff, uh, the reason these media meat puppets are saying crime is down is because law, it is. law enforcement has been instructed not to make arrests. Well, if law, okay, uh, you know you don't get crime stats just from arrests. Crime stats are actually from victim impact statements and reports. You don't even have to catch the person for the crime to be registered. For reducing the report. What do you what do you what do you think? All the dead bodies just got up and walked away. You think the 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 rape victims just shook it off? You think the people who had their store raided and shit stolen out of it were just like, eh, well, well. Let's go to bed early and hit it hard tomorrow. Reported crime numbers. Yeah, that's absolutely right. If you don't hold people accountable, absolutely crime is going to go down because if you So you're letting them go? Is that what you're telling me? You're sheriff, right? So your 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 department's letting people go? They're just I mean cuz crime is up in maggot areas higher than it is per capita, especially in blue areas. So uh if if these stats are a lie, you're just I mean, I understand what you think about Baltimore and Chicago and D.C. and whatever the fuck, but uh, there aren't enough people in there to sway the statistics without you guys. And so are you just are you guys just letting them go? You're not out charging people if the county attorneys or the or the district attorneys and those doesn't matter if they if they don't charge them. That doesn't mean the crime wasn't committed. It just it registers a plea and all that kind of stuff. It doesn't mean that the victim what actually occurred didn't happen. The states or cities are not holding people accountable. It's going to look as if crime is going down. Not to mention the FBI has the ability to maneuver those statistics however they want. One of yeah, of course, they could just make them up. Just none of your business. One of those statistics. Chris Ray, another Trump appointee. That the FBI does not collect from us through NIBRS, which we all hate, but we have to do it anyway because that's what. Why do you hate it? The federal government requires. Uh, but when NIBRS, when we submit those statistics, one stat they do not collect is whether those crimes are being committed by people that are in this country illegally. Yeah. Hmm. Yes. And if it did list it, it would show that those crimes are lower than all the rest. So you get to benefit from this. It is just so incredibly disheartening. And, and so, another example of this is over in California yeah. where Newsom decided that anyone stealing up to $900 worth of goods or merchandise would not be prosecuted. So that's just one example of... Uh, 
She said wood. Many, many others. Uh, but speaking of California, Noted. there's also now an explosion. By the way, those are those are local ordinances, not state. Explosion in the number of burglaries uh, from South American gangs. I have a clip uh, that was played on the mainstream news that I'd like to play for you, and then we'll come right back to discuss. Oh, that's weird. So, so the fake news does get it right sometimes. We have a significant increase in burglaries from um, organized groups that are outside this country that are coming into the country. Um, and they are targeting uh, high-end residents. Tourist burglar task force, not illegals, people who come in on an actual visa. Um, and we are addressing that specifically in a task force fashion through multi-agencies. Lots of these. What? I, I, well, you can't tell me they're not charging anyone and then show me that they're forming a task force in Los Angeles about it. Break-ins have been recorded by security cameras in recent years. Yeah, but they didn't happen. Recent years, detectives tell me many tourist burglars who've been arrested often entered the U.S. through a visa waiver program. A visa waiver program. Didn't come across the southern border. Didn't sneak around. Just did, Just had their visa waived because of problems and whatever. Just made a story up. By the way, um, the... Those programs would be eliminated or, well, curtailed quite a bit in the border bill that Republicans refused to pass. Many were visiting from Chile and other South American countries. Who visiting? Illegally visiting? The LAPD says there have been more than 900 residential burglaries across the city since January. Mm -hmm. Some of those committed by the tourist burglars. Some of them? who often target luxury homes in the foothills. And some of them may be using new technology to interfere with home security. Just last week, the LAPD's Wilshire station sent out this. Wow, she's playing this whole fucking clip. She's just, she's just gonna, so OAN just borrows NBC's footage and just runs with it? Alert that Wi-Fi jammers had been used to block camera and alarm signals during. I was nowhere near the area. Stop it, you guys some recent break-ins so these gangs are being referred to as tourist gangs uh which sounds to me like a nice word to describe an, a new rash of burglaries that has really started on the heels of joe biden's orchestrated invasion right i mean what no because that would be the southern border you keep talking about these people flew in what do you make of this they, they, they he can't make anything of it he doesn't know that's exactly right and it's not no, it's not exactly right. Uh, isolated to California. We are seeing it here in Scottsdale, Arizona, Chandler, Arizona. We're seeing these Chilean gangs, Venezuelan gangs. I talked to the sheriffs. Yeah, Trump gave Venezuelans and Chileans a, a special waiver. That's the waiver they're talking about. It's out in Oakland. Real quick. <laughs> the U.S. will defer for 18 months the removal of certain Venezuelan nationals right as he's leaving. My God, 18 months. What was the spike and stuff that was happening? It was almost as if Trump got... Hmm. That's weird. President Donald Trump on Tuesday announced he will offer Venezuelan exiles protection from deportation, a movie he's considered for years, but refused to do until his last full day in office. Trump is using a little-known Deferred Enforcement Procedure uh, Departure Program, or DED, to offer temporary legal status to Venezuelans fleeing the humanitarian crisis brought on by Nicolas Maduro's regime. DED, similar to Temporary Protected Status, TPS, protects recipients from deportation and allows them to get work permits. However, it's granted directly by the president instead of the Department of Homeland Security. The deteriorative conditions within Venezuela, which presents an ongoing national security threat to safety and well-being of the American people, warrant the deferral of the removal of Venezuelan nationals who, pres who are present in the United States, Trump said in a memorandum released Tuesday. Based on Trump's memo, the U.S. will defer for 18 months the removal of certain Venezuelan nationals present in the U.S. on January 20th. It also allows Venezuelans to work during that period of time. Last year, the State Department had considered using DED to protect Venezuelans, but talks stalled over resistance to including relief for exiles in Trump's Venezuela strategy. The outgoing president's strategy centered around sanctions to put maximum pressure on the Maduro regime. 
The move to use DED instead of TPS stems from long-standing concern from some Republicans that TPS will eventually become a path to permanent residency in the United States. Deferred de enforcement departure is designated by the president and gives the chief executive the ability to end it without as many procedural hurdles, which is why, by the way, this a similar rule that they want to extend to the border with uh, under Biden, but is in that uh, in the border bill, the, like a version of shutting the the what it takes to shut the border is a similar like DED setup. Offering DED to, uh, it did, sounds weird. So DED to Venezuelans is expected to project about 200,000 Venezuelan citizens in the U.S. from deportation, the same number it potentially would have under TPS, according to the uh, congressional budget. But Republicans, such as Mario Diaz-Balart, um, have long pushed for the Trump administration to offer temporary legal status to Venezuelans, given the dire situation in the South American country. Uh, it was also long sold as a way to build more goodwill with F South Florida's Venezuelan community. It's almost like, he did it just because he lives in Florida. County, Michigan, which is where a little bit uh, right outside of Detroit. Uh, they're experiencing the same thing from the same gang. So, yeah, this is a real problem. And you talk about what California is doing, how they are uh, undermining the rule of law. We had a group of people come out stealing from uh, we got a call from one of our jurisdictions just outside of our county. Three people stealing, two females, one male. Uh, they Three people, two females and one male. They told us what the description of the vehicle was. We ended up finding the vehicle on the I-10 interstate. We pulled it over, high risk stop. We had our guns out. We got the people out of the car, two females. Did she use the bathroom before she robbed the place? Females, one male. Um, and uh, inside the car was all the stolen goods. When I walked back to the car, she says, well, why did you stop us? And I said, well, we had some thefts going on in these stores and you matched the description. So does your car and so does your license plate. And then she said to me, well, haven't you heard about the new law? Wow. And I said, honey, this is Arizona, not California. Here we call it theft. For all our viewers. Also, by the way, she was being bullshitted by the people she worked for. There, There is no new law where you can just steal. They're not going to stop you for that 900. That's the thing, on an individual basis. Once you work with somebody else, I got news for you. You don't each get to take 900 bucks worth of shit. That's a... That, that's grand larceny. Pulled over without cause. Bullshit. If you match the description, you're being pulled over. Yeah, just for the record. Um, hold on one second. Uh, give me a... Uh, chat me. Give me one second. Chat room. Thought I thought I heard Chip right outside the door. I was like, "What are you doing, you silly dummy?" Um, I I I make it. I I will get a kitty to end the show because I've been I went long, so why not? So uh, forgive me while I this is can get that charging. There you go, and I'll shut down these screens. Talk amongst yourselves, and I will be back with a cat. You are a whole lot of kitties. You're your big man. We've decided he has Godzilla face. He's got like Godzilla's head. <laughs> Cam and I decided. Look at this boy. Look at this boy. Look at this sweet boy. Look at this sweet boy. You want a snack? Is that what you wanted? Because he saw me. He was he was running around outside the door. I was like, oh. That's the snack noise. Uh-huh. Oh, boy. Yeah. Here we go. We'll get you one. All right. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Take care of yourself and take care of somebody else and take care of the kidney.
that like on the way out the door, guys. Thank you so much. See you soon. Also, Pantages Minneapolis, next Sexy Liberal Show, April 13th, coming up. Followed by the Barrymore in Madison. Actually, there's another one in there. These are grand more. May 11th, Madison, Wisconsin. April 16th, Whiskey. The Ultimate Jam Night returns. We're doing super groups. And yeah. Have a great night. Love you guys.